Oh boy, we're hanging out with uh, a bunch of really great people. We got Alex Jones, Luke Rudkowski, Shane Cashman, and I guess we're going to talk about lizard people or something because that's the that's the easiest conspiracy theory thing to talk about. But uh, actually, we'll just we'll just get started. Waste no time. Budweiser, man. I want to start with this because uh, we were literally just talking before the, we pressed record on this show about uh, you know Joe Rogan's on his show cracking a Bud Light with his buddies and. Uh, he was saying, like, I don't understand. It's silly. It's goofy. So I was mentioning, like, I, I, I just texted him. I was like, look, Dylan Mulvaney is selling alcohol, is, is marketing alcohol to children. And so it's, it's trans issues and it's alcohol being marketed to children. So like, I'm not surprised people are pissed off about this. But how are you guys doing? You just nailed it. Mm-hmm. In fact, I remember like 20 years ago, it came out in the news that Sumner Redstone was directing Nickelodeon that he owned to sexualize children down to about age seven, that they wanted them to start sexualizing when children would normally start doing it at 11, 12, 13 after puberty. They wanted it at six, seven, eight, because they could then connect the branding of the products and the psychological studies to that. So that's exactly why they're promoting trans agenda with all these market brands, because they know the children are being indoctrinated in the schools and the culture. They can then piggyback on that and that's why the uh, marketing director uh, of Bud Light said, our older audience is dying, even though it's a $137 million company. We don't want to be the good old boys and the tough guys anymore. We want to target the new generation. So she's telling you children. right there, it's children attaching to the weird sexualization uh, you know, in the system to the alcohol. Just like in the old days, Joe Camel was targeting the kids. And remember when you were a kid, the little packs of gum that looked like cigarettes and the little cigars? Yep. Turns out that was we used being- to we used to buy the little candy cigarettes, those little uh, little packs for like fifteen cents, and it was just like little sugar sticks. I remember and, those. I was eating yeah, those as well. And they, Disney also like Disney also has a lot of subliminal uh, propaganda over sexualizing children. They've been doing that for a very long time. And the short term is, of course, make them good consumers right now. But in the long term, it also destroys the possibility of them having any kind of cohesive family unit. And when they're when when someone doesn't have a family, they usually look for outside resources for their kind of fulfillment. Got they me. make the corporations. They're God. They buy more products from China. They don't. They don't look inwards. They look outwards, and they become the perfect consumer, which I think is also the base that they're after. And the big corporations know. Holy cow! We're dealing with a population crash. We're going to have to make sure that these guys are controlled under us and our rule, or else we're fucked, or screwed. Excuse me. Uh, by the other financial kind of situation moving moving ahead. By the way, Not- no one else is saying this, and this is in their own documents, folks. I'm getting chills. You guys are, you know, what you're hearing is the actual real truth that decodes all this. We don't hate trans people. We don't have people that, are, no, it's the fact that it's being superimposed as the new culture for what he just said. Yeah, they want, they, they want you hooked on big pharma. They want you buying their pills. They want you buying their medications. They want you a person that's not going to be whole. No family, no neighborhood, no community, pod, slave, bugs. Oh, yeah. That's your future. They're effectively killing the future by destroying your children. Yeah, uh, your, your, your audio is a little bit children. low, so can yeah. you speak more into no, the they're, they're, they are, and the one interesting consequence of all this is seeing people who weren't engaged politically before this, watching the, institu- the institutions become depraved. So now they're turning around being like, oh, this is interesting. They're coming after my kids. And, but there's a lot of people who just march in lockstep with whatever the popular culture is. So when they see the TV say these things, they go, whatever you say, I'll just do. But yeah. hey, now that we're all uh, warmed up and I think we kicked it off. Uh, how you doing, Alex? <laughs> It's good to be here. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's been going on? What, what, what's, uh, how, how's life? What are you working on? You know, my life overall is better than it's ever been and worse than it's ever been. It's kind of best of times, worst of times. And really, I just feel fulfilled and, and like I've kind of completed my main mission because back when I was first on air 28, 29 years ago, it was only old military guys and former FBI agents like Ted Gunderson that were talking about the New World Order. Maybe 1% knew about it. Uh, and now I watch the World Government Forum uh, in Dubai with Klaus Schwab and Elon Musk is saying world government's bad. We don't want to want centralized civilization that'll you know, destroy innovation and crush society. And then I see Robert F. Kennedy Jr. talking about there's been a globalist new world order coup through the bureaucracy, through the corporations over our life and Ron Paul and Rand Paul and Ted Cruz and just ba- and and. Matt Gates and just basically everybody, Bolsonaro, Victor Orban, uh, the new leader in Sweden, the, the new leader in Italy. You turn on the new leader of Italy and the woman sounds like 
like Alex Jones 25 years ago. And, and so there's a real satisfaction in that, knowing that what we said about how the world really works is now becoming mainstream. And it's not about, oh, I told you so, victory lap. Once people understand there's this global corporate manipulation and that they've been so arrogant, their white papers are all out there, you'll know everything I knew because you can go look it up and then say it more eloquently like Luke just did or like you guys just did. And so it's really game over once we're at the big parent table at Thanksgiving, not the little kid table. Once we go listen in and see what they're doing, it's game over for their system. Yeah, the you World see, Government uh, Summit, by the way, this year was talking about how cashless society is just around the corner. And you've been warning about that since, uh, what is what is it, 2020? Uh, uh, 2000, excuse me, 2000, the year 2000, you were warning people about a cashless society that's going to, to come where they track, trace, database, tax you and control you in so many different ways by getting rid of your possibility of any having any kind of financial I got, freedom. I, I, I got to ask a question. Uh, I remember listening to... Prison Planet or Infowars, I can't remember mm -hmm. which one, but you know, back in the day, this is probably like 2007 or eight, and I, I think around then you were talking about the Amero. Yes. What, whatever, ha so for those unfamiliar, it's like these images come out on the internet showing a North American currency that was gonna unify Canada, the United States, and Mexico, and here's the funny thing. Around the same time, you were also talking about Real ID. Mm -hmm. Real ID's here, I got one. It was true, you were right. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened with the Amero, this, this currency? Well, that's a whole can of worms. Uh, if you go back to the time, and you're right, that was 2007. That was back when Lou Dobbs was the biggest guy on TV. Yeah, well. And CNN still had big ratings. And he was like, not a liberal or conservative, but more of a libertarian. And really, the credit goes to Lou Dobbs on that. But but we also went to Bilderberg in Canada, covered it. And they would have these secret corporate summits, not just Bilderberg, where they would have several hundred corporate leaders and then they would vote and then give the politicians that were at these meetings, the 2006 Banff Canada one was key, and people were so upset that, that were there, they leaked thousands of pages of it. And so it was, here's the North American Union, here's the North American security perimeter. Uh, they proposed a, a single currency called the Amero. So it's the same plan. They just have beta tests that don't get launched exactly like they wanted to. But just three months ago, the Mexican president, it called for a North American continental security perimeter and a standardized system. So they're basically just like the EU walking you into it. Like the EU started in 47 with a steel trade agreement. Then with the, the Treaty of Rome in 56, and then boom, you wake up with an unelected bureaucracy uh, that actually runs the Euro. Then, then you have the elected Parliament, but it's only advisory to that original steel contract from 1947. So it's the same thing. We're already in the North American Union. That's what the real idea is. They've already merged database sharing with the Canadians and with the. Uh, I, got, I got a North American ID. I have an actual North American ID yeah, card. And you could use the ID to travel to, uh, to Canada, to Mexico. But, uh, and, and the original plans here were, were done up by, of course, the Council on Foreign Relations. They released all the documents. They released all the papers saying, we're going to make sure that everyone's going to be on the same economic level as the Mexicans. We're going to make sure that there's free trade. We're going to have NAFTA on steroids. That was the initial plan here. Quote. And it was all done as a way of saying, we're going to consolidate as much power as we can for ourselves while everyone else is going to be living under our booth. That was the larger plan there. I even remember talking to Vicente Fox, the president of Mexico. I went up to him in, in 2007 right. and I was like, uh, Vicente Fox, tell us about your plans for a global North American union. He was like, yes, it's great. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be incredible. We're all going to be living together. We're all going to be one country, just like the European U Union living under de facto fascist kind of uh, state that decides what everyone is going to be doing and living and how they're going to be feeling and, and, and living. And here's and, the key. Really, Sorry. It's become appealing to so many people. Like there's people people out there when I was still in New York who see this stuff, they like this idea of this global community of you being tracked by your parent government. They think and, it's great. And I just want to, I don't want to show this on camera because there's like identifying data, but I am holding right now a United States passport card, hmm. which is an ID that works in Canada, the United States and Mexico. It grants you border access and can be used in those places as an ID card. It is a North America ID. Under another, it, oh, exactly. Oh. So, so we're already living under it. And here's another example: Bill Gates has put in billions, and all these other big corporations have pooled in the UN in the last five years a global standardized system for central bank digital currencies, and that's already rolling out. It's already standardized, and by the time they completely roll it out, you, you don't even know what's hit you. I mean, it just basically happens. Yep. It's, it's nonchalant. Nonchalant. It goes really roll right over you. Yep. Is it? It's kind of funny though, because I, I was. Uh, I can't remember. It wasn't this time I've, we flew in Austin, but we were flying somewhere 
and you see all the signs everywhere. It's like, get your real ID, get your real mm-hmm. ID. And I was like, I remember watching Alex Jones like a really long time ago. And he was like, people listen, that the real IDs are coming. And I'm not, like, not only that, he was arrested at the DMV. <laughs> that was an at incredible story. He went to the DMV and you're like, I'm not signing up for your real ID totalitarian hellscape. That I, was I, in 1997. 1997. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you were arrested you're there because you're like, this is all about centralization of power and force. And they were doing this. Don't uh, remind me of that. I look so good back then. <laughs> but like so, so hut right now. The, the Amero, I think, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know enough about it other than I saw, it wasn't just on your show, all over the internet, people were sharing these, these mock images of what an Amero could look like. I think maybe what happened around that time is the emergence of cryptocurrency. And many, many people started to realize back then, if something like this takes off, we're going to need to use this instead. Well, exactly. But I remember the exact specifics now that you mention it. They mentioned a North American currency called the Amero in the in the li- literature that leaked out of the North American Union uh, meeting. They were calling it that uh, in Banff, Canada, and, and, and some subsequent ones as well. And yes, then a artist group made the mock coin, right? And, th- and that's went viral. Yeah, and then uh, uh, never happened. I wonder if it was just like wishful thinking on the part of some of these people who wanted, you know, the North American Union or whatever. But I also think it's fair to point out that I've been saying this for a while, Bitcoin could be a Trojan horse. I love Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin's fantastic. I, the the, the, the uh, notion of a decentralized store of value, whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, you have, uh, what I found interesting is that, you know, you're coming out on your show saying one world currencies and, and North American currencies and all that stuff. And then Bitcoin comes out and I see all of my anti-establishment hacker, anti-war people being like, this is it. And I'm like, man, if I was a globalist cabal and I wanted to create a one world currency or a new form of currency that everyone in the world would use, the first group I'd have to convince to use it are the right wing conspiracy people or the, the anti-war leftist people, the anti-establishment people. Get them to think this is their path towards freedom. And I'm not saying that Max Kaiser is some secret agent of the New World Order, but he used to be a top stockbroker, you know, knows the Soros is all them. And, and he's a friend of mine I like him. But in 2010... Was it 2009? Uh, we were in Watford, England. W- Watford, England. I think you were there too. Yeah, I was there too. Yep. During the <laughs> Bilderberg meeting. And he comes into the hotel one morning. We're not at the Bilderberg Hotel. It shut down our hotel. And he goes, Listen, who's your IT guy? And I go, Well, I brought a guy that's a driver, and I brought Rob Dew, who's a camera guy, and I brought Leanne Magadu. I barely know how to, you know, I know how to do stuff on the internet, but I don't know what a, what a wallet is. He goes, I want, I've got a digital currency wallet. It's Bitcoin. It's going to be the future. I'm going to give you, no, he says this is just true stories. I know, yeah. He goes, I want to give you 10,000 of these. Mm. And he goes, I want you to give away half of them, keep the rest for yourself, believe me, it's the most important thing you're ever going to do in your life. And he was arguing to be interviewed me by that day. He got so mad, he refused to do an interview with me when I didn't take the time and couldn't figure it out. He literally never got mad at me the many times I've hung out with him. He literally was like, F this, you're an idiot, and basically stormed off. Now, a couple of days later, he was being interviewed by some guy that did interviews in a taxi cab. He said, come over, I'll do the interview now, and we did it. But he literally turned red and blew up because uh, he should have kicked my ass. He should have said, you're taking this, you son of a bitch. <laughs> was, I wish he would have punched me in the nose and said, <laughs> you know, like in They Live, put the damn glasses on, like, take that Bitcoin. <laughs> Because <laughs> at its peak, I think it was worth like six hundred million or something. I mean, yeah, six, wow. sixty thousand per coin. So <laughs> let's just peak, yeah. at its peak. But let's just do uh, some quick. And this was real because he was handing yeah. out everywhere. And I think he's central in the whole deal. Like who gave him and that? The word is he's got billions. Three. I so uh, is it three hundred million? No, oh, three hundred million. Okay. Is that well, that sounds about right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, t- yeah so my t- my story is that. I was at a hackerspace and like we're all hanging out and I find Bitcoin. I'm on my laptop. I hear people talking about it. And then I, I looked at my buddy. I had $5,000 in savings and I, I, I'd never touched it. Like I had my cash that I would use and then I had cash that I never touched. And I was like, hey, man, you, you think I should put my, this five grand into Bitcoin of 70 cents per coin? And I was like, that seems like it could be interesting. And he goes, don't do it, man. It's a scam. Like, what is it even? You're going to buy a bunch of it. The dude's going to go spend all your money and then you're going to have nothing. And I was like, yeah, good point. Yeah. And if I if I never uh, if I bought it and never spent it, it's like a couple hundred million dollars. The funny thing is, yeah, I think it's like four hundred or something million. The funny thing is that five grand, I still have it. I never touched it. Yeah. My savings only I only added more to my savings. And so uh, I, I will say this about Max Kaiser back in like 2012 or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, him and Stacy, Max is literally like, Tim, listen to me. Buy Bitcoin. You're going to be rich. 
hang out with us long enough and you'll get it. And I was like, yeah, I, whatever, man. That's no, the same speech. Yeah. And, and now and now I'm like oh, way before it. that. <laughs> I'm telling <laughs> yeah, I tell him. I, mean, I can't imitate him that good. But he's like, he jumps up, he stopped eating. He goes, I can't believe it. You got to do this. You got to take it. Figure out. God damn it. You can't. You know. He's been pressuring me to do it too when it was when it was still like a few bucks. What's wrong with us? And I didn't listen. Were you at the table with us? You heard those big tables outside. Yes. yes. And I think uh, Ike was there too. David Ike. That's yeah, right. It was me, you, oh, David Ike. You can't make this wow. up. Uh, Can you, Max but, but, Kaiser. Uh, Look, it's great having him here because he's been there around yeah. so much. Yeah. Like I tell these story people like, come on, this set that sound real. He was and I'm there. Like, I was there. <laughs> it's real and it's crazier. Yeah. And, it's, and it's a lot more um, insane than people could actually believe yeah, here. Like, and David but, Ike's there. Yeah, yeah but, but wow. we were, I think we were friends with, with Max Kaiser before even Bitcoin kind of yeah. was, was on oh, yeah, the scene I'm, I'm, as well. I'm, I'm going to be like five years before that. Yeah, so so he was always, uh, you know, extremely popular. He went with the bald, he, he was in school with the Baldwins as well. Mm -hmm. he, he has a, a very crazy, illustrious he, he, career well. to say the least. Uh, but but there is a big potential, as you mentioned, you know, you know, Bitcoin being something bad or being something really good. And if it is really good, maybe he's one of the best people out there promoting it. But if it is really bad, that's also another thing that people and, should, and should question so, themselves. But I think overall, the answer is diversification because yeah. the central banks are wanting to now, at least they claim, get rid of it and make you take the SDRs. Folks, that is death. Central bank digital currencies will track everything, will devalue your currency, will control where you can spend it. It is, it is literal hell. You, that, that is the holy grail Mark of Mark the beast. Yeah, for real. You will have to have the code if you want to buy and trade. Cash through society, social credit score, yep. approval, punishment for, for daring to think differently than everyone here's, else like they're doing in China here's, right here's, now. Here's what I think people need to understand. I don't think the social credit score is going to be the way people described it, where it's like you go to 7-Eleven with your credit card and you're like, let me get two steak and cheese taquitos and a pack of Marlboro Reds. And they go, OK, swipe your card and you swipe and it goes, Rant. I'm sorry, your social credit score, your, your carbon footprint. You know what's going to happen is that if your social credit, credit score is bad, you're going to go to the grocery store and you get milk, bread and eggs and it's going to be $150. That's it. And, and you're, they're not going to tell you. It's just going to be like, Milk. So, you know, By the way, have you seen in China, they already they already run TV ads explaining where the guy goes up to get an airline ticket with his wife and child, and he goes, no, 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 you know, you are bad, and, it, and then it goes down the line mm. trying to go to a sports game, trying to get on a bus, trying to get a hotel. High-speed internet but, school but, but for but children as but well. Here's That's the, another listen, big one. The reason I don't think it'll be like that is that it's too overt and can lead to unrest. So if... You have a bad credit score. Let's say Luke's got a good social credit score and you've got a bad social credit score. You both grab the same bottle of Coke from the fridge. For Luke, with a good credit score, it's $3. For you, it's 6 And And what that does is it creates economic pressure where people who are bad struggle and have a harder time gaining influence. This makes it subtle. You're totally right. Just like YouTube demonetizes you, it, 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 it just makes you submit. They have to massage you. They can't. But let me back up what you're saying. How frustrating is it when you're surfing the internet and a, and a pre-roll ad plays on some weird platform, like a local news station, you can't find the ad again, okay? So about a month ago, I'm up at night, and I just click on something, and it r runs local Texas ads for Randall's grocery stores. And I, and I meant to go on their site and get this and find it, but I never did it. But I saw it, and it's, it's a real 30-second ad. And they said... Make good choices on what you eat and what you do and to help the environment and other social causes. Use the Randall's app and get big discounts for, for purchasing things that are good. I mean, there was a, literally a social credit score yeah. ad. What you just said, if you buy the right things and you're a good person, we're going to give you discounts. Yep. And that's, that's, you're right about how YouTube does it. You, you, put, a, you put 100 people on YouTube. And then, or, or Twitter or Facebook, you create a shadow ban list. So you slant things so that it's really hard for people on the right and somewhat easier for people on the left. If YouTube came out and was explicit and overt and, and just outright banned someone on the right. And in fact, in your case, Alex, the thing that scares these companies is if they take a big action all at once, they will, they will drop a boulder in, in, in the lake, causing a massive splash, which creates PR damage. So what they want to do is they want it to be gradual. In fact, a better example that I love talking about is eBay. eBay used to have a yellow website. One day they said, no yellow anymore. Yellow's bad. We'll make it white. Customers revolted saying the website was ugly. We hate it. Change it back. Change it back. So they went crap and changed it back. But then every day they incremented the color slightly towards white. And one year later, the website was white and no one noticed the change. Facebook had the same thing happen. Facebook used to do these company-wide rollouts of a new, a, a new uh, user interface, and everybody would lose their mind. 
They got smart and said, roll it out for 5% of the people once per month until it's totally rolled out. That way we minimize the amount of unrest. This is what's, what it's going to be like with social credit scores. They can't just come out and be like, okay, all of these people are bad, so ban them from the store. They're stealth rolling it out. And that's the case for 99% of people. In, in the case of my banning, now in hindsight, I, I was like, I'm not this important to have thousands of articles a week at sometimes, hundreds a day always, hundreds of news programs a month lying about me, demonizing me. It was more propaganda, seriously, than before they invaded Iraq, because then it was compacted into a few months. It was like Alex Jones is everywhere. Mm -hmm. He's the devil. He's Satan. So when I got banned, it legitimized, well, he deserves to be banned. And so the first domino falls. And then it was Louis Farrakhan and, you know, people that they can, you know, take mm -hmm. out of context or demonize or who mm -hmm. might not be that good. And then once people didn't stand up for me, then they had the president set and then, it, they, and then Trump was banned. They realized the potential of the power right. of character assassination. You know, they used to take out people different ways, but now it's the Trump, you, you know, the way they, the media creates a, a demon out of people. And, so, and at first so, I was asking, I'm not that important. I mean, yeah. I'll be honest. I, I was trying to figure it out. I started to figure it out and now it's all confirmed. They've had big articles, the Wall Street Journal, mm -hmm. Time Magazine, how we did it, how we did it. You know, we went and targeted Jones. We had PR firms. We uh -huh. knew once, in fact, there was a Wall Street Journal article where they said, we're about a year before they banned me. They said, and then it was a derivative of it was like a Gizmodo. And it said, hold on to your tinfoil hat. YouTube's going to shut you down. So I went and paid for the subscription, 40 something page article to the shareholders. I mean, it was written publicly, but it was the shareholders right, right when News Corp was about to split. And they said, don't worry, the news business is still going to be successful because we're going to take out Julian Assange and Alex Jones. The left, when, 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 when we take out Julian Assange, the left accepts that. They'll accept banning the left. When we ban Jones, the right will accept it. And within a few years, what you just said, we will turn the internet into Netflix with only a few hundred of our choices. Mm -hmm. Exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. and, and then they Restrict did it. Act. And yeah. then they did it. Oh, yeah. That's, that's crazy. The, that's the Restrict Act. Yep. So I would, people have been asking, like, what is it? What does it mean? And, and people have said, oh, it's Patriot Act 2.0. The simple way to explain it is early internet was wild, man. It was wild. You could find whatever the fuck. And now what's happened is the Internet has become apps with the restrict act. What's what it's going to be is you're going to open your phone and there's going to be 10 apps and you're going to get, you know, Twitter will be your central water cooler. YouTube will be Netflix. Facebook will be the phone book. And you're not going to want to go to any other website there. This is what people are worried about with net neutrality. Whatever happened with that, they're worried that the Internet will become just a few channels. That's what I think the restrict act brings us to. And it's got to be gradual. I think that the, the powerful elites, politicians are upset that we went from, you know, five massive broadcast towers that dictated opinion to loose change on Google video. Exactly. <laughs> loose change on Google video, getting millions of hits overnight. hundred million. Yeah. hundred million. And, so, and, and not just that, because of that, people were sharing DVDs of loose change. So they're like, OK, how can we stop this? They couldn't do it overnight because it would create too big of a splash. So they start rolling it out as slowly as they can mm -hmm. trying. The, here, here's how it works. They need to make sure that the suppression is at 51 percent and the speech is at 49, which creates inverse pressure. So slowly over time, free speech dies and censorship reigns supreme. Mm -hmm. It's very exactly. And if you supported me being taken offline and others, they would then boost you for a while. But then later they would take them off as well. Yeah. So, so, so it's like a, a it's like the Nazis did. Smart authoritarian systems, as you said, always go incremental. Hitler wasn't gassing and burning and killing millions of Jews and other people until the last few years of the war. It started with, oh, just going after this group a little or taking their land or putting them in a ghetto or then by 1940, ship them off to a forced labor camp. 1941, start killing them. Mm -hmm. 1944, accelerate. And, and, mm -hmm. and, yep. and, and so that's tyranny. how they do it. Infiltrate <clears throat> the system yep. and then take over and then start to slowly and slowly start to kill the population off. And, and that's essentially with soft kill weapons and fifth generational warfare, what's happening right now in America on a larger scale. Now yep. you combine that with the already existing social credit score that exists here in the United States and China, it's run by the government. In the United States, it's, it's run by Silicon Valley. There's already a score assigned to you about your agreeableness, about your political preferences, oh. about your ideas, about what you love, what you don't love. It exists. It is here today, and it is already weaponized in so many different ways with insurance companies, mm -hmm. with, with uh, Airbnb, with, and I could keep going on and on. Every aspect of your life and is already AI controlled. And indexes yeah. that these groups have yep. that then create the number. And I, and I learned about it. It was given secret documents three years ago uh, by literally a banker shaking, and I showed it to a law firm in D. 
FCC, and they actually contacted them and said, take this off. And they said, screw you, go ahead and sue us. And, and this company is not really a company based in Boston. It's the CIA. Yeah. And so. And what are they doing? What is it? Like, what is it? Well, I don't even know I want to say the name because they asked me, my lawyers asked me not to, but we confirmed the documents. But I suddenly got debanked everywhere. Mm. And I had like perfect credit, never had loans, uh, had like 0.2% chargebacks. You know, we ran stuff really good at InfoWars Store and had been there for, you know, 20 years before that at the time. And so finally, we were going out trying to get other banks, and this, this big bank, you know, actually came and met with me because the guy's a listener, and he said, Listen, they put watermarks on this. Every one we get sent is coded to us. He goes, I can't give this to you. You can only write down these names. But it showed a graph and all these scores, and it was printed out, okay? It was like printed out of like a big printer, like long. He laid it on the table. He wouldn't let me take photos of it, but he said, here's the group out of Boston. They put the report in that goes into all these other databases. Here you were previously with a score of 98 point whatever, which is, by the way, he says almost no one has that. And that's why it's such a low credit card rate, like a 1.5%. Process like a good rating, yeah, absolutely, almost like platinum. Yeah, but it said one rating by this group out of Massachusetts, and it went. It's like a gauge, you know, ninety-eight to fourteen percent in the red for one designation, hate, and that wow. one designation in the code, and then it shows all these other codes that, that, that didn't because it was a, it was a printout of a computer interface, mm. so I, I I wasn't able to click on all the data dashboard mm. but i mean th th this is what's going on with what you just yeah. said well they test I, I, I just want to make one point here they test a lot of this stuff in mit and harvard uh they they roll this out slowly they they make sure that they run different parameters and different studies uh -huh. to specifically have the smartest minds working with the intelligence agencies seeing how far we could push this how far we could get away with and this. luke just yeah. guessed what it was but it's a, it's a, it's a group out of mit a private corporation in boston yeah, i mean there's CIA. A, yeah, yeah. I, I mean there's a reason jeffrey epstein had his own personal offices at Harvard, mm. he had his own office. He has he had his own office hours. It's not a coincidence. I feel like we're in the evil yeah. mutant version of what started with like Project Shamrock Echelon, mm -hmm. where they're just collecting everything in the '40s to already create a, an identity for you and how you are. And uh, you know, the past few years and technology has accelerated that hell. I totally agree. Yeah, and and, and that's it. It's it's the stealth frog in the pot yep. boiling, and people need to know you're the target. It's not Alex Jones. It's not Tim Pool. No, all of us are the target of this mm. Evermind takeover. We're, We're just chickens. standing in the way. We're just this is, the this, first this, ones this, to get this, hit. This, this is the way I explain it, Alex. Uh, do, you have, do you have any chickens by chance? Uh, no, but I've, I've, I've heard your chicken analogy and I've seen your chickens. <laughs> so, well, which, which chicken analogy? The one with the guns? Because the, there, there's a couple I use. And one is, imagine you're trying to go pick up the eggs from your chickens. And one day you walk in and the roosters are armed. No. And they don't let you take those eggs. You're going to be rightly pissed off and say, we need to figure out how to get these guns away from these roosters. Now, obviously, roosters don't have guns. But what they do is, uh, what they do have is the spurs. Roosters, uh, as they get older, they grow large spikes. keratin spikes on their legs that they can stab you with. And so what do people do? They will incapacitate the rooster and then take pliers and snap the spurs off their legs, which is very painful and brutal. I won't do it to my roosters. And that way they can't spur you when you're going in to collect eggs. Well, you get spurred, you might do it. I've been around chickens, families oh, sure. at farms. I've not been hit by one, but yeah, sometimes a rooster that's been nice to you for years will be sitting on a fence post and just hit you in the face with a spur. So, and, then uh, and then he's going in the pot. <laughs> my, buddy, my buddy just killed well, one. I, 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 I take a different view. I mean, honestly, I've seen a lot of people kill roosters because they get too aggressive. But like my thing is, you know, the roosters can do their business. We have an easy way to collect the eggs. I'm not worried about it. So if we got a good rooster who's protecting the hens, like I'm let them do their business. But back to the analogy, we as the American people are one of the only countries on the planet that have a constitutionally protected right to defend ourselves from anything, enemies, foreign and domestic, criminals to tyranny. And that is the biggest problem, I think, that stops what's been happening. You look at the Commonwealth countries, you look at those videos during the lockdowns in, in Canada, you look at like, I love that. Australia built concentration camps, captured indigenous children and mm. forced them into it. And I love when people like Claire Lehman were like, they're not concentration camps. And then there's a, a there's a, an article about how three teen, indigenous teenagers jumped the fence and fled and were hunted down and captured. Mm. And in the United States, it's a lot harder for them to pull these things off because it's a large country with a whole lot of guns. And by the way, uh, Dr. Ryan and others, the head of the UN Global Emergency Response, gave speeches and said, this is a beta test for future pandemics, 
and we're going to train people that we can even come in and take certain family members, including their children. And so we're going to use this in the future to build these new communities. And Klaus Schwab says, soon you won't live in a city. You'll live in a commune. Uh. They're getting ready to break down the civilization, collapse it to bring in this new system. And large parts of the population will be put in these emergency centers where you're basically in a prison. And they're simply using COVID as the beta test to sell that. And they admit it. H5N1. Absolutely. That, that, that's what it'll be. But sorry, continue. Yeah. And they're also about Mar- Mar- Marburg uh, yep. is a big one. It's just like an Ebola type deal. So that's what's so frustrating is this is all there. This is happening. Oh, yeah. This is going yeah. on. And the globalists, I'd use this analogy. The globalists don't like eating eggs anymore. And we got too many hens and too many roosters. They've decided that uh, they're going to get rid of us. And, and, that's really where we're at. That's that's really where the plan is. And to physically get rid of us, they have to first get rid of our worth, build a system where humans are obsolete, where humans aren't valued, and then they can bring in the government-sponsored euthanasia and the whole death cult and everything we're seeing now. Oh, You're absolutely right. I was literally, I was literally writing notes, and and what I was writing, you were saying. I was like, there, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it, it, the the COVID lockdowns were the beta test for the 15-minute uh-huh. cities that, of course, they're going to try to utilize and roll out everywhere. And and you're right with that analogy. They're sick of eating the eggs, and there's too many hens, and there's too many roosters, and specifically that is a reference to life extension technology and them trying to live forever. So they're they're essentially going to reach this kind of singularity where they're going to be so technologically advanced. They're going to have so many uh, opportunities to prolong their life to where they're going to live forever mm. that they know that they have to take everyone else out if that's going to be the that's because it's going to take massive to resources for each one of these cyborgs to live and operate. That's what yeah. I say when when I say this idea is appealing to certain people. I'm walking around Austin. I love this place. It's great. I'm having great food, a great time. But I noticed yesterday I walked around for hours with my wife. We saw no kids. It was like there's a lot of people who are just not having kids. Maybe they all had babysitters. I don't know. But I just feel like there's a lot of people I know in my life who are my age older. They're just not having kids. They're not even interested. And that's why my wife wants to move to one of the nice towns outside Austin. Because you go there, there's little kids, there's happy people. It's bizarre. But yeah, in Austin, the ratio of children is not very high. And you talk about brainwashing. They brainwash kids in the public schools here as bad as San Francisco. Well, isn't child oh, mutilation yeah. pretty popular in Austin? Oh, it's a cult. Yeah. I mean, look. I'm not going to get into personal family stuff, people I know. Yeah. But, you know, you think, okay, you know, my uh, 12-year-old wants to go to public school. They've been in private school. They want to go. Their friends go there. And they literally come home w- with stuff that, that's worse than you see on the news. And oh, it's like... Yeah. No, we, we've, had, we've got... We've had a couple people on the show have told us this, that their kid went to a school, which they thought was a good school. 12-year-old girl comes home and says that they're pansexual or something like that. That's exactly what goes on. And then the, the mom has to be like, do you know what that means? Like, I don't know. That's what they told me I was. And, and they've already pre-programmed. And when yep. you say, no, you're not, they go, oh, you t- they, they told me you'd oppress me. Yep. 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 They say, we, they, they said that if I told my parents, my parents would tell me I, 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 it was wrong. So, so now your kids, the seeds are being planted. Of rebellion. Immediately. Absolutely. You gotta get, the people got to get their kids out of these schools. Oh, they're the they're, and I taught at colleges for years. But let me and let I me let it was me, bad there. But the, the public schools are, are just as bad as the colleges. Let's 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 be black as possible. <laughs> so the cities they want to destroy them, right? Yes. How do you build a fifteen minute city? You convince everyone to leave the cities and go form you know little communities in rural areas with like minded people, and then you've planted the seeds for people to start setting up their own smaller, less uh, resource heavy, fifteen minute cities. So if you've got one big city, how do you control New York City? I often bring this up. New York City has what, Luke? 40,000 cops? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, about that. It's like yeah. between 30 and 40,000. You control it by controlling transportation and resources. Well, but check this out. And, 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 and we'll allow, well, we can elaborate that on a second. But here's what I want to say. New York's got 13 million people in the metropolitan area, 2.5 million in Manhattan alone. 2.5 million people. So if 10% of Manhattan revolts, You've got 250,000 people marching through the streets, smashing things. And for the entire five boroughs, only 40,000 cops. There's no way you could like you could bring tyranny to a city such a no, you do it through the social credit score and that your card only works at certain stores. So they believe they'll be able to control them through the Pavlovian carrot and stick. And also, yes, that's a huge component of it. But also consider this. If you can splatter the city with a figurative boot, and force the people to spread out. You no longer have a hyper concentration of millions of people. You now have, instead of one city with 2.5 million people, you now have 250 cities with smaller amounts of people that can be oppressed on demand. 
to send in a police force into New York to suppress hundreds of thousands of people would be very, very difficult to have a whole 250 cities with substantially less people. You only need a small police force to be dispatched one at a time whenever that city. No, goes I totally agree. I totally agree with what you're saying from the perspective of they've wargamed all the different angles. They want to bring in giant outside migrant populations and fill the mega cities. And then the globalists themselves want to have redoubts in areas that are going to be controlled in corridors. So they're allowing other communities to develop, just like the globalists exempt themselves from all their own laws and live in Switzerland. Yeah. And so from, 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 from deep research on it, absolutely, they'll be able to squash any rebellions in small cities they want. But at the same time, they always want to have something where they can live, not like the rest of the people. So that's why if you go to a local town, the demographics, the people, the mindset, you need to really educate people about this, make sure that town is self-sufficient and be in political control of it. Or yes, a smaller town or city is easier to control. You're absolutely this is, right. This is where we're at. I mean, COVID, this, one of the symptoms of COVID or consequences of COVID was people leaving the cities. So the, our map has changed, like our geography, our population has changed. And then places like New York City, uh, those, those like the mayor was de Blasio at the time, he was buying up buildings and just filling them with the homeless people, bringing in, you know, different immigrants. And while the, the well, he wasn't buying, was he leaving, talked about a plan that I think when, they did, when they do the fault that he's going to make affordable housing. I think, I think they bought hotels. My, my yeah, mother-in-law I I works at, at uh, one of the hotels that is now used for the migrant homeless centers. people. Yeah, uh, I think he migrant centers, buildings. right, right. It's but, not homeless. They, they don't care about the local population. Guess, they care about homeless. the new population so they that they're with, bringing in. So the homeless people were sleeping outside of tent cities right. while uh, you know new migrants were brought in right. to replace the the old, then, older population. And with the falling birth rates as well, that's something also to to kind of consider here with the yeah. larger. Yeah, Blasio then, bought here. seventeen properties. Yeah, and then just to, to tie the bow on that of how dystopian it is. Before all that was happening. Oh right, no, that was a private deal. Sorry, so at that was the beginning of COVID. Yeah. They released how many prisoners from jail? You know, at, at the start of lockdown to create and, a health. And let me expand on that. And to show how fast moving this is, we've been in beta for the last 60, 70 years with the globalists, according to their own words. And around 1993, with the whole Agenda 21 Rio de Janeiro summit in, in, in 92, but, 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 but in 93, they go, okay, we're serious now. And by 2000, we want to begin the project for Agenda 21. And then by 2021, we launched 2030 or Agenda 2030. Everybody knows about that. But this is how fast moving it is now. I remember just six years ago, articles in Bloomberg and people saying, we're going to set up laws and, and tax bases in all these new special mega cities like Austin and, and New York were chosen as examples, uh, and also Toronto and, and a few others. And they said, we're going to only make it where new buildings are like 250 square foot, the nicer one's 500, and we're going to basically make you live in those and pay just as much as you'd pay before for something bigger. So literally coffin apartments. Now in Austin, they're building, they already built three of them, two more giant coffin apartment facilities. We're talking, I mean, I mean, it's happening. They're, they're going to make coffin apartments that will double as your suicide pod. Absolutely. That is literally <laughs> the world they want. Absolutely. It's terrifying. It's funny because Futurama thought it was a joke at the suicide <laughs> booth. Right but now you've got medical assistance in dying in Canada, Canada they and the they have commercials for it. Let me just stress this. The, I think it was the government of Canada that did this. They did, yeah. They, yeah they, made, they're right? commercials. They're at the beach. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And of course, it comes out. They're like, hey, I've got back problems. Why don't you go ahead and kill yourself? That's it. And so they're pushing them to do it mm -hmm. while, oh, we'll pay to have a girl's breast removed. And, and of course, there's that famous college, I forget which one, last year saying, we're going to make 40 grand per vasectomy off this or whatever. And... Now they're promoting the, the new marginalized group that, 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 that doctor is talking about eunuchs, saying that eunuchs are oppressed groups that aren't getting enough attention or whatever. I, I would not be surprised if they create a new identity. It's not a new identity, honestly. Eunuch has been around but, forever. But relaunch yeah. it. But, but yeah. being like, rebranding is if you identify as a eunuch, you can come get your surgery. Get those little bad boys removed, why don't you? Yeah, can't yeah. take care of the veterans. Yep. Can't do any Almost. of this. Teaching people to commit suicide, pushing them to do it, and then. But 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 the thing about them, you always remember everything. What was the university last year where the woman gets up and says, "We're making twenty thousand dollars doing this and forty thousand dollars doing that." Um. Yeah, it's, I remember watching that video. That specifically the University of Syracuse was that was that was that uh, the uh, one the hospital? It was a children's hospital of Boston as well that released yeah. uh, very similar videos. And then I went and looked it up. Uh, really good breast jobs like twelve grand, forty grand to cut a girl's breast off. I mean, and so I went and looked up the medical procedure. That's like 
like five thousand dollars. So they're also yeah. jacking the price mm-hmm. up. They're also ripping you off. I mean, <laughs> and then the government's That's the real for problem. It. Well, no, it's like Taking we're gonna money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, just the amount of greed in them is disgusting. And they're salivating in these <laughs> yeah. videos. They're so, so up. this this is all very much like in the plane of reality, though. But there was this video I saw that was really, really good. Man, it was so good. Michael Knowles was talking about this. He's he's giving a speech, and this woman asks him. She says, two spirit, trans, it's been around for thousands of years. How can you claim that this thing should be eradicated if it's been around for so long? You know, transgender ideology should be eradicated if it's been around so long. And he was like, well, a lot of bad ideas have been around for a really long time. Like cannibalism. But then he says this thing where he was like, he's like, so you're saying that pagans sacrificed children to demons so we should castrate children. I don't follow or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, But this actually brings me into i guess the more metaphysical and the and the and the crazier side of these things is the demonic mm-hmm. is the uh, um allusions to like revelation and things like that mm-hmm. we've had a ton of people messaging us saying mark of like we, i mentioned mark of the beast mm-hmm. earlier they want you to have a social credit score or a, a central bank digital currency everyone's trying to figure out what the mark of the beast is this thing that you have to have on your hand or forehead or whatever that is required if you want to buy or sell or well, trade. Well, the Bible, if you translate it into the Hebrew or the Aramaic, uh, which was translated into you know, the Greek and then into English, King James Version, if you look at it, it, it describes a world government system, 10 separate kingdoms, but three super regions. And then it says that the beast can be seen by everyone on earth at the same time everywhere and in the temples and in the markets and it describes like this 30 foot image of the beast talking to you so it's like a hologram i mean how are they coming up with this this is a great science fiction writer it's true and then i guess they adopt it to you know dominate and control maybe it's a self-fulfilling prophecy but or it, it's a revelation from god aliens warning us about something else but if you look at this it's 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 literally saying the mark of your body, your biometrics, and the fact that you worship the beast and give power unto it, the social credit score. You've got to agree. You've got to serve. You've got to do you know social credit scores. You've got to go out and and do all this work to to be part of this system. And then if you do, it gives you wonders. It cures diseases. Mm-hmm. It makes you live longer. Because they've got all this real stuff they've been suppressing. Mm-hmm. And so imagine, you're like, I don't want my kid to die. Mm-hmm. And, but this is satanic. Well, okay, hail Satan. Okay. Yep. I mean, you know, my daughter's dying of this or my son's dying of that. And so it's going to be really hard to not just, it's not just you're not going to get food. That's for people who live off in the, you know, Christian ghettos of the future, according to their own models. The Rockefeller Foundation put out uh, like 12 years ago, Plantopolis videos for kids in the UK. And it describes... Uh, the government tells you what you're going to be. Nobody's allowed to have cars. You lived in a lockdown city. You're in a coffin apartment, but it's great. But there's that freedom ghetto that that the lady's brother lives in, where they don't get medicine or anything. But you know they they think they're free, and and, and so they're already pre-programming this. So whether Revelation is real or not, they've decided to go with it and are using it as the model. Yeah, this is why a lot of people believe that there's demonic possession because a lot of different organizations come and go. Whether it's the Club of Rome, whether it's Agenda. 20- 21, UN 2030, or the Great Reset, throughout many centuries and decades, we see these same ideas. We see very similar individuals try to do the same thing, centralize power, have a new world order, have a global order mm-hmm. where they control everyone, and of course, enslave under, uh, everyone under their rule. And this is why many people think, you know, the ideas come and go, but, but, but this larger centralized energetic battle that's happening right now is unfolding right now be- between the forces of good and evil. And I believe it was the Vanderbilt Transgender Health clinic that you were mentioning that was earlier. It. Yes, well, there's videos. Yeah, where they yeah they've replaced God. The modern God is the government. And you watch the depravity happen in like the churches in the cities where they're talking about God is, is a trans person now. God is trans. It's, which 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 the the um, Tavistock Institute in the 60s kind of developed the current trans agenda. And th- they said, once we get people to accept two men can have a baby, mm-hmm. they'll accept animal human hybrids. They'll accept multi-human hybrids. And they see the headline, oh, three gay men to have a baby. Well, there's no mitochondria from a woman there. It's not really a human. Mm-hmm. And in the future, it'll be illegal to say, hey, that clone doesn't get the same rights as me or that replicant doesn't oh, get the yeah. same rights. Yep. What's that? Uh, I watched some movie recently where I can't remember what it was. Or is it, I think it's a series or something where in the future they have slave, uh, genetically engineered slaves that are, you know, their IQ is like 50. And so they can't communicate properly and they're beaten and, and forced to doing labor like in the future, they genetically engineer a lesser, a subhuman class. For, uh, that's for, uh, that's Brave New World. 
Is that what they do in Brave New World? Yeah. Which is the template. And let's talk about that. I know yep. Luke, no, yep, yep. you probably know about this. So Aldous Huxley was part of the British government. His family for three generations before him, at least four, or th- no, at least three, was the British government and the British crown would give the equivalent of like $2 billion today to if somebody can invent a clock that's down to the second accurate. And then in 20 years, somebody actually invents it. And now they're able to dominate the world because they have clocks that work and be put on ships. Well, then they said, well, we want to know how to control people and find the secrets of life and how we can live longer and how we can control the general public. So by, so that, that project is launched in about 1851 by Sir Francis Galton. And then the Huxleys and all them work for this government project. And, and, and most of this is public. He then writes Brave New World in 1932, describing this whole genetic engineered suboid uh, class system they're going to build by drugging people and electromagnetics and all this. Then before he dies in 61, he gives a speech in Berkeley about his book, Brave New World Revisited. And he says, this is actually our real plan. And my brother runs the UN. He actually really founded it. Um, That's uh, Aldous Huxley's uh, book. is the name of Julian Huxley's brother, and he, and he was the head of the UNESCO and the whole project. So this is a real deal. And and oh no, I, I was going to say. Uh, so what do I need to invest in? Where 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 do I do? I, which companies? You know. You know, I personally have never invested in anything, but 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 the First Amendment because. It's, it's so complex to know what to invest in or what to do. You know, Joe Rogan's a really nice guy. He trusted me like six months before he moved to Austin and, and the Spotify deal. He goes, listen, don't tell anybody, but I've got the Spotify deal and, uh, you know, it's going to be huge. And I didn't tell my wife, didn't tell anybody about it. I said, okay, we can trust me with that. Great. And then, uh, but the stock exploded right the first few months after he did it. That would have been insider trading, so I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. That's why I stay away from stocks because really when you are in all this knowledge, I would become obsessed with it. Because you, you can make a lot of money, and it's also like a real video game. And so I've just stayed away from it because it's, it's too inviting. Yeah, and what you well, mentioned, I'm, I'm well, but I just want to go back to the, to the original point here, because you were, you, were, you were really uh, steamrolling on some really important information, especially with Brave New World, because there was a very similar situation with, with Eric Blair, with, of course, uh, George Orwell, as, as uh, many people He was actually part of the project. Uh, uh, part of the UK government as well. And his family was part of the project, project with Huxley. And they were trying to warn us through fictional writings to what was coming. Uh, and when you look at Brave New World in 1984, you see so many parallels to what's happening right now in, in our society with the incrementation of the... the, and, no, the and, and Huxley of talks forward. about that in the book. Exactly. Let's, let's uh, I just want to say, we'll be careful on this next subject, but I have to bring it up. Alex, have you watched the show Utopia? Uh, yes, I have. I've, I've watched the original... And the new one? Yes. Holy shit. And, 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 <laughs> and they're warning you. Yeah. Well, so hold on. Let me, let me break this up for people who don't know. Utopia, spoiler alerts, is a show about... Simply put, a tech billionaire who makes fake meat and is concerned about overpopulation stages a fake pandemic to rush through an experimental vaccine without approval that convinces people they're being saved, but actually sterilizes them. But wait, there's more. The core storyline follows a group of young people who believe a comic book called Utopia was written to convey the secret plan of these elites so that regular people could know who are smart enough could know what was going on. So let me just say, it's a show about a guy who secretly unveils the plan of the global elites through a work of fiction. Mm -hmm. And it is a tech tech billionaire concerned about overpopulation that's sterilizing people through a fake pandemic. And uh, completely unrelated, it's a work of fiction uh, in our reality, in real reality, there's a work of fiction that claims a tech billionaire is. So, you know, it's kind of just Well, let me take you one further. And I've talked to Chris Carter, and, and he, he's talked about it in, in, in news articles. Because he's the, the X, who's the X Files guy. X Files guy. Before you, you know the last season they did in like 2016. Um, well, b- 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 there's so much the problem. I mean, I mean, what you're saying, all, all this stuff, because I have all the documentation on this, so it just makes my head explode. <laughs> I'm loving this interview. I love being here, not at eight at night, but in the morning, my brain's working better. But, but go back to the previous point, Utopia. Yeah. Okay. This is what's really going on. And this is what I've been told by Dr. Rima Labo, whose husband 
was the head of the army and the head of special operations and the head of all the secret projects. They made the movie Ministerial Ghost to make fun of it, but that was just one project. It was actually deadly serious, and they actually did do a bunch of that stuff. Okay, yep. I, I spent time in Chile with them. Uh, absolutely true. Been everywhere. Um, the conversations I had w- with them and and the the head of the U- U.S. Um, what was it? In, um, in, uh, Intel. Uh, which was just absolutely just mind boggling, but they're retired now, but they're warning people about all this stuff. And when we talk about the larger woo woo energetic stuff, it's all, it's all real on so many different levels. Well, that's levels. right. He, I mean, he, he died yeah, a few years ago. She's still alive. Woo energetic stuff? The woo woo kind of energetic, uh, hippy dippy stuff. Oh, you that mean the stuff Ian discuss. talks about is real? <laughs> uh, on some levels. Well, well, yes. well, the Pentagon proved it's there, but it's not controllable. But, but let's just expand on this. He was the head of army intelligence, the head of everything. And, well, but real quick, I'm sorry. Like, you're saying, like, Woo woo magnetism. Did you ever? Energy. Did you ever? Did you ever? You know, uh, see. I mean, there's movies of this, but but the men who stare. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, successfully yeah. killed goats with their minds. With their minds. Yeah. Those are real government projects that were oh, happening yeah. based on real life events. Right. There's fictional depictions of this, but but right. this is this is this is real. And then that's where George Lucas and all that gets because it was going on before even those movies. So like mm-hmm. psychic powers and stuff are yeah, real. Remote or what? viewing stuff like remote that. But, but 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 the problem is there's con artists and stuff that claim it. That what they found is it's real. It's uncontrollable. So anyone saying they've got control like they're Gandalf is a liar. Everybody's got. How do geese know how to fly from northern Canada all the way to Mexico, and, and they were born in Canada. Let me let me tell you something. Uh, I, they, they have magnetic rods in their brains. I've I've exactly. met a lot of people. Uh, and this is a tendency I see. I've, I've met a couple. I've met a lot of people who have claimed this. They've claimed that magic is real, and I've I've seen more of it in Hollywood than I've seen in other places. But granted, there's only a handful of people, and they say things like either magic is real or I have the ability to manifest reality, like these kinds of ideas. Mm-hmm. They and these are people who s- somehow stumble upon great fortune in their lives, like quite literally. Like I'm talking about people who I would consider to be moderately unremarkable in terms of work ethic and ability, but somehow always, always navigate properly into wealth and means. And they say to me, oh, it's because I have magic. That's what they tell me. I think sometimes they might be def- people define these things differently. You know, you and I yeah. have talked about this stuff where we've kind of found ourselves in crazy situations that you might have thought about prior and you don't even know how you wound up there. You know, so the so to, to, to go back to that idea, though, are, are you suggesting that various people have different levels of access to some kind of like metaphysical energy or something? Well, I, I've I actually know a lot about this, but not from books or anything from actual experience. And, and so we get into a whole long story of stuff and it's, it's pretty wild. But I don't know if you want to know this stuff. I definitely want to know. This oh, stuff. yeah. Well, <laughs> both, sides are, are, both sides of my family are both sides of my family are heavily psychic. Uh, my uh, grandmother's, um, my great grandmother on my mom's side was like one of the top psychics, but she was not public. She was secret in Dallas. Like the U.S. presidents would come see her and stuff. So I mean, wow. and that my family would even talk so about it. So it gets pretty crazy. People are going to think you're, you know, people are going it, it, to. It's very hard stuff. to describe because there's so much. Look, I have that dreams that completely come true, and almost everybody's had that happen. But I, right. I, I, I have, but everybody has it. I have, but on the scale, a lot of, uh, but but it, it's. They've proven now with all the mathematics, there's all these other higher dimensions. That's like dark matter. It's five times stronger on average, and it's most of space. Well, it's actually whatever's holding this in. So our DNA is just simply a code that just takes the proteins and salts and things and then builds these things. It's like you breed two ragdoll cats to get more beautiful magic creatures. And it's because it's it's a our, the third dimensional body we have is like a footprint in the sand of the higher dimensional yeah energetics and then all dna is is a seed planted that has that code to bring in that energy mm. that's all it is huh. okay and, and 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 so there is no time it all loops back in it's full space all that stuff and so but but then at this level to try to control that when this manifestation is is what you call the weakest level of what our true entity is is let me, let me, let me try and put it this way it's like the fingernail of something doing the thinking so like like tim pool's not sitting there uh, one of Tim Pool's hairs is sitting right, there. right. I've heard this that we're all basically like follicles of some big being, but in terms of the psychic- yeah, you're jacking into that exactly. It's right. not just like it's not just that Tim Pool's this big giant thing mm-hmm. exactly. It's That's like a, it's, it's like a brain cell within a brain. Right, right. right. But so here's something like you're, yeah, so you can jack into the larger brain. Talking about this psychic, but can you even understand it when you see it? It's the problem. Psychic energy and all that stuff. So like I'm wearing glasses right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if any of you are wearing glasses or contacts. My eyes are actually not that bad, but bad enough to where I need to wear glasses. Is that how you would describe this, like, access to the metaphysical energy? Like, some people Perfectly. have Perfectly. Some people have vision. 2015, and some people got to wear Coke bottle glasses. 
Yeah. But, and, and, and like the Bible calls it gifts of the spirit. There's different gifts that are known. But, but, but let me just expand on the earlier thing about uh, utopia. What Rima Labo told me and what other, and, and she was a doctor to, to heads of state. And she told me off record who told her about the culling plan. We're going to use a vaccine. We're going to do it all. That's why I'm in that Jesse Ventura episode that I basically wrote because it's off real stuff about the vaccines. It's viral everywhere. <clears throat> and how they'll roll it out, how they're going to have lockdowns and do all this. She told me, she said, it's an IQ test, Alex. And she said, when they roll this out, they're going to put warnings out. They're going to tell people what's going on. Their argument is, as long as they metaphysically warn you, like put an ad in the paper, we're going to you know take this house on this day, so be at the courthouse if you, if you want to. Or these people are about to be married. If anyone wants to challenge this, say it now or forever hold your peace. It's a contract metaphysically where they know that they have to tell you. So they this people that the people putting out utopia think they're probably helping people and they, and they probably were, but those that told them that and let that get out wanted that for a larger reason to actually warn people who they think need to be saved. So it's right. all an IQ test. And I was told that basically that's what a mm-hmm. lot of high up folks told me. That's what Chris Carter has said. Well, let, let, mm-hmm. let me, let me elaborate on this. People, uh, people have asked why, do they allow shows like mine, but uh, like shows like yours, not, but shows like mine, yes. And there's a couple, there's, there's a couple of views. One is if you look at the ab- abortion stuff and you look at the trans stuff, I have, I've made this point many times this past week. I put out a tweet saying spay and neuter your children to prevent overpopulation. Nobody cares. No hit pieces, no complaints. I've ramped it up and said the left are excising themselves from the gene pool through sterilization and abortion. No one cares. Not a single leftist complains. I have tweeted this to leftists. Like, well, that's it. The leftist they, ideology is, but, is but people listen, opting in to kill themselves. But listen, they don't care. The media doesn't care that I say that. But then I say, don't buy Budweiser. And oh, do they lose their minds? Well, and and so what I, what, I, what I see with this is, I actually see exactly what you described. They... It's, I would not be surprised, I'll put it this way, that they would consider it an IQ test because the end result are that the people, if, if, if I go to someone and say, here's what's happening, and they say, uh, duh, and then ignore it, there's only so much you can do. It feels like forced selection, artificial selection, create a circumstance by which smart people can survive and stupid people will not, and you are engaging in eugenics. Well, well they also energetically believe that they're absolving themselves of any kind of responsibility by making it so overt, by having the, the kind of larger symbolism there and essentially telling you what they're doing. And and and, and th- this is a, a larger kind of demonic energy as well, because they're like, oh, yeah, we didn't do anything. They knew what they were doing there mm-hmm. and they have no responsibility at all. Exactly. Yeah. Because in the universe, taking something that sent its free will is a law that you break, you get destroyed. So they have to tell you so that it's your free will choice. It's yeah. like a contract with the devil. They have, even they do it sneakily and it's in fine print, mm-hmm. but this, it's there. this really feels biblical, to be honest. Like, oh, you know, the, the, sure. the idea of the, the war between heaven and hell and all of the tropes we've seen with like movies like Constantine or whatever, where the devil and God are like, he makes a wager and, you know, how many souls can he capture? It really is. I view it like, a war between God and the devil, and God says, only through their own free will are you allowed to capture souls. Yes. And if you can't do it that way, then you get nothing. And the devil said, I bet you I can get a lot through free will. And so that's the battle. Is is free will going to be enough? And if you really go back to, um, I, love, I love the old conspiracy theory about like the planet uh, Nibiru or planet Eris, X. planet X, and this idea that, um, you probably know more about this than I do, but the idea was, An alien's race came to Earth and genetically modified apes to be a slave race. And then there was a faction of these aliens that said, it's wrong to do this. And we don't think you should create semi-intelligent slave races. And so it created a war between the factions, which resulted in, you know, like the the freeing of the slave. And they made a more advanced group. Yeah, right. So uh, I I guess. Well, I think I mean, I think it's clear you look at human evolution and it's not the way the church says it is. It's not the way the scientists, the real scientists now admit there's massive jumps and there's DNA cut in there. And uh, yeah, there's was, definitely been massive. I mean, we were definitely designed. All of this was obviously designed. Well, so so um, let me try and simplify because a couple of different schools of thought in this conspiracy theory. I don't even, even call it a conspiracy because it's not a conspiracy. It's just like a weird story. But it's either an alien species created humans to be slaves to mine gold. That's one of the 
you know, cookie stories. And then within this faction, they split in two with one saying, we think this is morally wrong. And one saying, who cares? They're ours. Another theory is that aliens came to Earth and created an intelligent species to to mine gold for them. But they were too smart. And they said, no, we will not serve you. So then the aliens created a subspecies, humans, which were even stupider, creating a conflict between the, 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 the first and the second or whatever. But here, here's my point. This conspiracy theory, the general idea is the two factions were fighting over whether or not humans should have free will. And it very much is more of a sci-fi version of the battle between God and the devil or good and evil. Sure. Well, we'll hear from uh, when I started talking about this about six, seven years ago, people said, well, we've heard about that from Rudolf Steiner. And I never even read his books until then. And, and he basically said a lot of the similar things that he had, had, had basically figured out. And I don't agree with everything that came out of him or the schools that they set up out of it or any of that. Uh, so I'm not saying I'm a follower of that. But studying history, looking at this, and also dreams I've had, and, and, and then l- l- later finding out that it's in Sanskrit and hieroglyphs that said the same thing, that we see it as a cosmology of like God, and the devil, and it is God that made it. But it, it really is. There's destructive chaos energy. And then there is enlightened higher levels of energy and the true singularity, all knowledge, all free will, beauty, creativity that, that, that gives birth to more free will. So you have this spectrum and what energy do you resonate with from the third dimension that's a jumping off point, you know, the lowest dimension that actually has real matter? Are you going to drift into these other dimensions or false dimensions or things that have been created to not be part of this larger creation, these rebellions, these breakaway dimensions? It's not just lower dimensions, breakaway dimensions. Or are you going to resonate up into be, uh, beyond nirvana, beyond uh, Ascend. enlightenment? Ascend? Ascend, yeah. Have you ever seen Stargate SG-1? Uh, I've seen some of the episodes. A component of it is that once you read a certain level of like consciousness, you ascend to a higher plane of like pure energy or something. And uh, the story of Stargate, I'll oversimplify it, is like... There are these gates, these rings, Mm -hmm. and you can encode and then travel all over the the universe or whatever, or galaxy. I think it's I think it's the galaxy or it might be the universe, actually, in later series. The general idea is that there was an ancient species that would send ships out building stargates and connecting various points. And that's how they travel, Mm -hmm. you know, throughout the universe. But at a certain point, they ceased. They they were gone. And other aliens, uh, the go the Goa Uld discover these gates, use them to enslave other species, taking over their bodies and things like that. But the the ancients, the reason they're gone is they reached a level of enlightenment where they ascended from the physical realm to a higher plane of existence and now no longer care for what happens in, in phys- the physical world because they exist well beyond it. Mm-hmm. So in, in the show, various, you know, like a couple humans like or various species reach that point and they all just vanish and just ascend. And I don't know if it was you talking about this, but I've heard the conversation that this general idea is very much what the powerful elites want for themselves. They want to extend beyond the realm of human bodies. Well, 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 absolutely. Again, people like H.G. Wells, people, the time machine, all of that, things to come, uh, people, I mean, there's uh, Arthur C. Clarke, who was in British intelligence and all the rest of it. They wrote white papers and also nonfiction books admitting this is my real cosmology. This is what I really believe. And it's really the same story over and over and over again of the Morlocks and the Eloy. The Morlocks have the knowledge. They're really bestial and control the general public that's simple minded, but they basically feed on them. But if you go further in childhood's end, um, these aliens show up and say, we're going to be live in of technology and heal you and everything. And finally, after a few generations, they say, now we're going to show you what we look like. And it's like a 15 foot tall, big giant red devil. Uh, and by the way, we want your children uh, because they're going to ascend. And basically, people go, fine, you've already given us all this life extension. Here's the kids. The kids leave their bodies, go up into the spaceship, and basically take off. And, and the thing is, those devils really aren't the devils in his cosmology. They're a species that's unable to evolve like humans the next level that is just a servant class on the big ship that goes around scooping up. But when they're done, they blow the planet Earth up. What do they do with the kids? Uh, they, they, just, they just download them. They disappear. This is, this, is a, this is a crazy thought, too, just getting as wild and crazy as possibly as, as we can. This idea, just random conspiracy sci-fi thought. If aliens were abducting kids, that could mean that there are planets of human beings who are just absolutely different from us. And there's just like humans all over the, the galaxy or the universe that are just like laborers. You know? and, and, and 
just like in the movie, that's an excellent movie, The Island, where they think they're on an island because there's been a bio attack and they're safe. They've got to exercise and be ready to win and get sent to the new island that's better. And really, they're just clones. But they found that if you just have a bag with a clone in it, keeping it alive, the organs die. It's not healthy. Yep. So these are clones of famous people, rich people on the outside. They finally break out. They finally see it. It's it's an allegory of a Plato's cave. But that's what what you'd say is you want alive, strong people, and we're just basically a planet of spare parts. And then and then oh now it's evolving where the globalists are going to be the interface with Have these you, groups to be the brokers and actually, you know, well, uh, and, and the earth is ripening and, and now ready for culling. Have you seen the movie Jupiter Rising? Uh, I meant to. I heard it was good. I, I, I don't know if I'd say it was good, but it definitely is in line with a lot of what we're talking about. Like one of the characters is a, a, a dog human hybrid and bred for loyalty and service to be a soldier to protect the, the, the royal family or whatever. And then basically the story is I think it's Jupiter Rising. There's powerful intergalactic elites that they're human and they create planets of humans that once it reaches to a few billion, like 10 billion people, they cull all of the humans because they need ridiculous sums of human life to extend their own lives. So they're farming planets of humans so they can live forever. So it's the story of the dark crystal. Over is that what it is? Because that's that whether the whole adrenochrome thing is real or not. I and mean, there's obviously devil worshippers that do weird stuff like that. This whole thing is about farming the young, using the young, expending the young, sending the young off to die in wars. That's why it's not just in the movie Ten Commandments. It's not just in the Bible. They've gone and you know read the scrolls that are in the in, in the tombs and, and the hieroglyphs where Ramses the first said there are too many of these Jews, which was one of their slave classes. Uh, everybody was their slaves, and uh, I want the firstborn male killed because they knew the firstborn male. They now know, or firstborn girl. That's why all the astronauts are firstborn. All that somehow downloads it's not just that they're around adults more so they act more adult they somehow download knowledge more from their parents it, it, it's mm. like designed how this metaphysical electromagnetic system works it's been proven in other animals as well but particularly humans but also whales dolphins you name it the firstborn is really really important and so not just there but when the aztecs would dominate other mayan cultures they would order the firstborn killed Okay, so when we hear about virgins, it means little boys, little girls, but it's like, give us your firstborn because they knew those are the ones that are going to cause trouble. Wow. It severs the connection to the ancestral DNA. And epigenetics, exactly. Yeah, yeah. wow. Uh, here's an allegory. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Here, here's a parallel. You know about monarch butterflies. Yeah. They go from, I think, like central Mexico, the one place they are, these big, huge, giant trees, and they fly all the way to Canada, and they have babies in Canada who then fly all the way back. But listen, it, it takes these three or four generations to get to Canada. So they have to wow. just, you know, just during the spring and summer months into the fall, they fly up to Texas, lay eggs, die. Those hatch out. Caterpillars become butterflies. They get all the way up to Canada. Then the next group lays the eggs. And then there's a monarch three times bigger that then flies back to Mexico and lays the eggs for the cycle to begin again. And so that's basically what a firstborn is. And that is the firstborn. It's the one that's born to go back to Mexico. See, see, see how the, see how the cycle works. Yep. I guess the question is, you know, well, drifting back from the more metaphysical and wild theories into reality, are we going to win is, is individuality, meritocracy, human rights going to win? It has to win, and natural selection is real. I, I, I think the way Darwin put it was oversimplified, but look where he was. But he was also part of that project that the British government was funding to, to learn the secrets of the universe. And by the 1860s, they developed a term called biometrics. They, they developed all these terms that are the modern sciences we have today just by postulating that they could be real. Max Planck, by 1898, had the equations for atomic bombs. It was theoretical, but we now know it was real. And so you've got to give them that. But but again, the way they say evolution is, is used to discredit the metaphysical God and all this stuff we don't know. Well, that's just something outside of our light spectrum we can't see. And we're basically blind compared to all the energies and things that are out there. And, 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 and again, we know that we just basically resonate with all of this. But um, they are they are forcing this evolution and they're accelerating this evolution. And they're basically doing a big, giant experiment like with a chemistry set that they believe they're going to extract the knowledge out of this battle of the gods, this Guter Damarong, this Ragnarok that's about to happen in their words, and out of this great 
upheaval of creative destruction, they are then going to transcend into the Uber mention. And, and they've been talking about uploading human consciousness. They've been talking about, uh, you know, essentially singularity when they meet one with technology. And they are working on a lot of really crazy uh, deep stuff that we could even get into here in this show. But I, yeah, by I, the I way, think, we can go long yeah, if you want to, yeah. because because my show is got time. Uh, but but I can I can have Owen come in or I can run stuff because we can go right up to eleven if you want or after. But the forces of of you I know mean, good and evil cool. always kind of battle. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's always evil that's always collectivist that that always wants to centralize everything that always is is always trying to control and put their boot on everything. The forces of good don't like to do that. But if the threat becomes too real, the forces of good usually do come together and defeat the forces so of, I feel of like evil. We're getting to that and point. As I'm speaking in a very generalized term, and I, and I feel like we're reaching the point where where the good people and the good good I, I, I hate to go there. Vibrations or energies or creatures or anything. <laughs> oh, don't let are, 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 hear saying, this. are saying, hey, uh, we, we better get our stuff together. We better yeah. come together or we're going to be destroyed very soon because the forces of evil are organizing in so many different ways and they're and they're attacking humanity and they're destroying right. the human spirit that has a, a, a clause within it that, of course, has self-protection. And this larger energetic um, spiritual battle is happening right now and, and we're at the moment of it re reaching a crescendo point. This is why I say as terrible as the lockdowns were and killing the economy covid was a kind of blessing for people to wake up to the true horrors of the tyranny and now like people who were totally disengaged from politics and the culture what's the in. it's a yin and yang yeah, and this is why it's backfired it's backfired yeah, totally a lot backfired, of secret society which is why they want to restrict act i think because they can kind of streamline the internet so we can't go and subvert the yeah even farid zakaria came out and said it's our well <laughs> so uh, wow. we, were, we were talking before about like magnetic energy and vibrations or psychic powers do you think, this is a question for everybody else, like, and, but first for you, Alex, like, do you think that you are m like more connected or have, have more access to that metaphysical energy than the average person? I mean, from the real, there's a whole bunch of mainline studies, not kooky stuff, that it's associated with why birds and other things know how to fly on magnetic lines. That's why the ancients built their temples yep. on magnetic lines. Yeah, Cryptochromes. Third right? right. parallel nice. as well. That's another big one. That, yeah, that has and, a lot and, of and there's like lines. Points. Yep. Yeah, I, I, the I first time lay, I ley lines. Absolutely. Yeah, ley lines. First time I went to Stonehenge, I've been there a couple of times before they put up the fences around it and all that stuff like 15 years ago, 20 years ago. There's a park ranger standing over there, and it's me and a couple of my crew members were over there covering stuff. And I'm walking up the thing, and I got a water in my hand, I'm eating an apple. And when I cross this line, about 50, 60 yards from even getting up to him, they're right here. I go like, you know, like Bugs Bunny when he goes, Wee! it was like, Bruh! and the guy goes, yeah, about a third of the people, when they go over that, they feel it. He goes, I can't feel it. Whoa. Uh, but, uh, but, 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 you know, Carol, I think you said another ranger, she can feel it. He goes, it's really intense the first time you do it, and at certain times of the year. But he goes, we just sit here. And we watch people and they walk across that line because actually Whoa, we're like, wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The pyramids are also on the same kind right. of energy ley line as uh, Stonehenge. But uh, summer and uh, winter solstice, they actually let you get near them and let you like touch huh. them and Absolutely. let you like, they party said, on them. Stonehenge? They said the gunstones yeah. were part of the but, but too. But Stonehenge was rebuilt, wasn't it? It was well, like, well, yeah. I mean, with the pieces they had, some, right. of, some of it was already standing. I've, people yeah. say it's fake. Uh, no, a lot of it was still there. But yeah, they, they rebuilt it, made it safe so it wouldn't fall over. You know, they, they, they put them back up. Most of the pyramids, like in Mexico, they've been reconstructed. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but, to the point of, it's that I have, he, he said about a third of people feel it, okay? Uh, and, and so, and, and, and they believe that is because more people, some people have more magnetic cones in their brain. And it's in and around the pineal gland. It's, they say that's the seat of the soul, but it's, it, it's in other centers of the brain that basically your brain has sensors in it or it literally is third eyes, and they know in the butterflies and in the geese, they have those magnetic cones. They have like mm -hmm. a little receiver, just like your cell phone yeah. has a receiver. The crypto and, and, yeah. and, and so, but it's got a genetic code yeah. that knows to follow that that's already pre-programmed. Yeah, essentially, I, 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 he, uh, like living beings have frequencies. We are just frequencies. Some of them are high oh. vibration, some of them are low vibration. Well, I, I, and I think that's another way of explaining I got, it as well. I got one for you. I read this one on the on online a long time ago. So you guys are familiar with the double slit experiment. I remember the I've name. Heard of it, yeah. It's it there, there's a, a much crazier experiment that people mentioned to me, but the double slit experiment is the one that people know, where the simplest version is they took a, you know, a piece of metal or whatever and they put a slit in it. Oh, then, oh, you're talking about the observance. Uh, yes. Yeah, quantum this, is, this is where when they fired electrons through a single slit, they got a on, on, behind it was a single pattern, a, a line, which makes sense because, you know, it's blocking it. When they did a double slit, they got a wave pattern as if it was more fluid instead of a single point. And then the argument from the hippy dippies was that this proves the observer that you observing 
has an impact on the universe. I've never subscribed to that, but... Well, they've recreated it, it thousands of times. And, and crazier ones, Well, too. Well, where, where if they're observing the molecule, the electron will not go through the metal. There's no opening. But, here's, but here's, as, soon as, you, as soon as you don't observe it, it jumps. Right. But then it's there. And they don't know how it happens. So the issue... Well, it's almost like God. We're not, certain stuff we're not allowed to see. Well, but, but, right. but I can simplify it for people. It's like, here's the problem. They say the word observe. Here's the way I explain it. If there is a spider running across the floor and I say, let's measure how far the spider is running and I slam a ruler on the ground. You make it run faster. Right. And then and then they're like, whoa, the spider changed its movement because we observed it. No, you freaked it out. So we don't know how we're interfering. I think you just said it. It's like something's not watching that we're watching. They've done those. My my point is simply when it comes to double set experiment, it may be that the instrument we put in place or don't put in place interferes with the process. But here's here's what I wanted to get to. I don't want to harp on that. The idea is this. If that is true, that observers have an impact on reality through what they expect or or just through observation, that would mean that every single human is participating in the creation and fabrication of reality, which would mean the less people there are, the more of an influence an individual would have, right? Mm-hmm. If there are 10 people in existence and each one of them, their perception dictates what reality will be, that means an individual has 10% control over physical reality. And then perhaps you start seeing things like magic and they all among each other can see people do things that are magical. But as population expands, more and more people are competing in their observation with what reality is, which basically solidifies it. It can no longer change because everyone's perspectives are the same. And that's why uh, through unless, big mass events, unless, they program us. Unless you then fluoridate everyone's brain and destroy the part of their brain that connects mm. to the metaphysical. So I read this thing online that a long time ago, which I found was very funny. Sci-fi, we'll call it sci-fi. But fluoride does, does calcify right. the, the body. What, yeah, what they said was, I was reading this blog online that said the reason they fluoridated our water was to calcify the pineal gland so that people could no longer have influence over reality through observation and only the powerful elites could do it. Somewhere online I saw, I, I, was, I was looking into fluoride and the history of fluoride and when the government started, I think it was in the 50s, right? And it was one of those old government like commercials, propaganda, black and white videos. And they were looking at different towns across the country that had fluoride in the water. And one of their prime examples of great water with fluoride was Flint, Michigan. And look where we are now. Oh, yeah. You know, they use that as like the postcard child for uh, fluoride. It's crazy. So, I mean, simply put, I love stories like that. I'm not saying it's true or whatever. It just sounds kooky, but it would be a great, a great sci-fi. But if you really believe in the double slit experiment, you really believe, because I've had friends say, manifest it, right? I got a buddy, Luke and I have this buddy, Robbie. I'm trying to find parking by his house. And I call my girl, bro. He's in LA. I'm like, I can't find parking anywhere. And he goes, not with that attitude. You got to manifest it, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, manifest it? And he's like, yeah, 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 you got, you got to manifest the parking space. And I was like, dude, I can't manifest a parking space. And he's like, yeah, you can, bro. And I'm like, whatever. And I'll drive around until I find a parking space. But there are people who really believe that your expectations shape the universe. Sure. I've thought a lot about this. And I mean, I think it gets exaggerated by Oprah Winfrey to the power of a thousand. I mean, it's, it's, it's not how it works. But humans have incredible imaginations. And as we develop civilization and technology and infrastructure, now we can do things that a thousand years ago, people would think we're gods. Mm-hmm. And, and so we're getting to a position where we are superhuman, as Elon Musk has said, but it's people don't care about the knowledge or care about the power. They're not using it right. They're letting it enslave them. So more knowledge, more information, more power to, to learn and, and, inv- and invent and envision and the globalists are working as hard as they can to jam that and dumb that down and give us terrible visions because they don't want us competing with the future. Yeah. They want to be able to control the development and architecture. Well, you are the accumulation of your thoughts and what you find your mind is going to look for, especially if you keep focusing on, on it. And I think this is why they're trying to dominate entertainment. They're trying to dominate the news with so much negativity, with so much bullcrap, with so much things that distract us from the true source of where we truly are and what we could achieve. Exactly. And, they, and, and, and rather than doing something constructive, rather than building, growing, they destroy. Okay. And that's essentially what we see with the, with the social media algorithms with the boob tube programming with all the movies with all the tv series with all the music it's all destructive even on a frequency level when they change the frequency to music to specifically be more disharmonious to the human frequency and their residency that of course resonates with good energy by the way i can back him up on that the the cia it's all been declassified the frank church committee hearings and things that was just up to the 70s the cia comes out 
and says, we want ugly architecture and we want to promote ugly art just so people don't can't 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 differentiate. And we want to go against what's already pre-programmed. Like brutalism. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and then it gets worse. They started doing it on so many fronts in, in so many ways and saying we want discordant music. We and and we want within just just a generation to have basically no attention span. So that's why you watch cartoons from like a, a, sixty years ago, and you know they're still stupid, they're slapstick, but but there's a whole narrative. Oh yeah. Now you watch cartoons, none of it makes sense. It's moving so fast, and all it does is get your attention, but it doesn't even create a real narrative in your head. That was specifically designed, and, and people like Paul Ehrlich, and these interviews are online on YouTube and on Twitter. Paul Ehrlich, who, who wrote Population Bomb and was like one of the top global advisors of this plan, he's in 1970 on TV, and he on a, one of those talk shows for like an hour, and he just describes everything. We're going to make male role models look bad. We're going to show homes without the fathers in them. That's how we're going to depopulate, uh, and we're going to destroy people's attention spans for their good to control them because we have a master plan. Mm -hmm. We're the elite. Oh, you know, my, my kids can't watch any modern cartoons because in almost every single one, the parents are idiots. Exactly. It, every parent is an idiot and the kids are talking down to them and it's it, totally, wow. that's just, the, that's the whole world in all the cartoons. Absolutely. Yeah, they try to destroy you first in your imagination. If they could oh, do yeah. that with, with what they show you, with what mm -hmm. they highlight to mm -hmm. you, they could do that to you because you essentially start copying and mimicking yep. it and doing it to and yourself, especially if you don't have any kind of spiritual grounding or larger connection to, uh, you know, the, the, the earth. And they anchor you to the false reality with materialism. So if you, if you care about only things and no longer about God, you're their slave because all, all you need is the money to get the, the crap you, you want or you think you want. Absolutely. And again, and then they also, you know, people wake up. So they say, oh, anything is bad. Having anything's bad. No, just don't worship the things. Don't sell off the things. Right. But it's good to have things so that you're independent from them. Their main goal is to get you as poor as possible yeah. by only making you care about things because then you'll sell out your real agency and who you are for them for peanuts. So what we need is wealth based on beauty and culture and empowerment Legacy. and enlightenment. Well, not the false, ugly culture they're selling us where we will sell our souls for stuff that destroys us. Well, look, I want to ask you this because we talked about it last night. Uh, I think Luke brought up the concept of useless eaters. Mm -hmm. Who's that guy? Yuval you, Harari. Yuval Harari. Yep. He says that there's like a bunch of people on the planet are useless eaters. And I hear a lot from the anti-establishment or conspiracists, whatever you want to call it, side where they're like, how, how could he say that? All these people are evil. And I'm like, but he's right. There are useless eaters. Now, I'm not saying he's right in what his plans are. But there are a lot of people on this planet who I would describe as useless. And the problem is you have this zombie cult faction of people who are celebrating uh, it. Well, but I would I would call them either fire or zombies mm -hmm. in that what I view as the woke left is a chaotic and destructive force that is only tearing down human civilization. Tasmanian devils. And that to me, they're useless eaters. They consume and destroy. So. Is that wrong to call them useless? Well, well let's eaters? expand on that. That's a chicken or the egg debate. Here's what we have to understand. Hitler said there's useless eaters and there's genetic problems and we've got to get rid of the sub races. Okay. He wanted to kill the sub races, uh, the subhumans, and then the sub races would be slaves to the Aryans. Okay. That was his twisted plan. Like, why did he just blow up Poland for no reason? Because he said, well, we just deserve to have that land. So, so it's the same, it's the same thing. So it's only a few steps. Once you decide my uniform is better, I'm smarter. I've got better scientists. And you could argue the Germans had the best scientists and the highest IQ people. And so out of that power trip, well, we'll just kill everybody and take over because we're God, we're Superman. That's where the term of Superman, Uber mentioned and all that comes from. And then we're all the subhumans or the slave humans. And, and, and so you, if you read what no, you've all know Harari says, the high priest of Davos, Celebrated everywhere, pushed in all the bookstores, pushed to our kids. He literally is giving you Hitler quotes, but it's okay because he's liberal mm -hmm. and he's Jewish. Now, I'm not saying he's a Nazi. I'm saying I've read Mein Kampf and I've read the Final Solution stuff and I've read what Hitler said. And, and he said it all the same way. We can't take care of these people. They're just going to keep breeding. Mm -hmm. There's ghettos full of them. We're just going to go ahead and just work them to death and kill them so we get something good out of these people. And then they won't be in any pain for generation, for generation, for generation. But once you have that argument, now you see where you go. So it's this power trip. Just last week was a new quote of him, a 42-second video. I played it yesterday. It was so evil, and I played it in context. It was even worse. And he says, you will be obsolete if you don't merge the machines and do what we tell you, and you just will be totally worthless and we'll have to get rid of you. He said merge with machines, like, yeah, like yes. Neuralink? Neuralink? He, he, yeah. said, he said the super elite 
won't need you. You're going to be workless. And so you, you, you better beg to be part of us or you're going to be gotten rid of. I mean, and I'm like sitting there and they're going, oh, it's so liberal. But, but, it's, <laughs> but it's what you said. The left is not uh, uh, liberal. The left are minions of the corporate system that have drunk the Kool-Aid that have fallen to the propaganda. And at the top, the Bill Gates and the globalist people are way more advanced than Hitler. And this is all a giant project. And I've basically been told that they just let you do that so that the, some of the smart people won't be fully destroyed. Well, uh, I mean, I'll, this I'll, is Klaus, this is Klaus Schwab's right hand man, and he's talking about specifically drugging people and pacifying them with video games so they don't revolt because they're going to be a total useless class. And the superhuman aspect that you talk about is specifically related to artificial intelligence because they're very big into what they call the fourth industrial revolution. He says the which, future is yeah. not human is a quote. Exactly. But, but so hold on. If, the, if that's true, what you're basically saying is this show is permitted as kind of an arc to capture the attention of people smart enough to save themselves from what's to come. Yeah, it's really, imagine there's a big flame to get the moths to going in. And, and, we're, and we're standing in front of it being like, don't do it. Yeah. And, and, and they accept that we say this because it will preserve the smarter people. Is it that, allows that, them that, deniability. It allows them to have plausible deniability to say, hey, they had a choice. I, I've been saying this for a while, though. Uh, here's the example that I give, another chicken analogy, because chickens are amazing, by the way. Uh, uh, let's, say you, <laughs> let's say you have 10 chickens yeah. and they keep taking shits in their water. You go in your chicken coop and you say, you chickens, you stop shitting in your water. The next day you come out, five are shitting in the corner. Five are still shitting in their water. Which one do you eat? You eat the ones that are causing problems and shitting all over the place. And the ones that are more orderly, you want to keep and breed because, no. and, and, and I, I don't understand why anyone would think powerful governments would view this any differently. They, it, it may be callous to say they view us as chickens, but they certainly at grand scale have to consider if, if you know, based on their worldview, numbers and statistics. I agree, but but the, the, but see, this plan they developed. They had a leftist liberal plan with H.G. Uh, Wells and others that were the people popularizing the British eugenics plan. So that's the British Empire, the most powerful thing in the world at the time. Then they called it the German problem because the Germans, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, were always their rivals and were starting to beat them in science, technology, and colonization, not through military, but colonization through industry. When you go to Mexico, everything was built by the Germans there. and It's all over the place. And so what do you do? Well, British intelligence at the end of World War I, uh, Lord Milner, and these papers are public, said in the next 20 years we need to go finance a right-wing out of control, nationalistic, militaristic group over there. We need to crush Germany with sanctions, Versailles Treaty, and then build them up for another war. Then we'll, our failed League of Nations will then happen, and we'll call it the UN. So they didn't control Hitler, but they went and wound him up and then told Albert uh, Rudolf Speer, what, what, was, what was Hitler's uh, vice, uh, vice, uh, vice, uh, vice Fuhrer? Uh, Rudolf Hess, Rudolf Hess. That's why Rudolf Hess parachuted into the palace over London, waving the peace treaty, and they locked him up in the tower you know, for 40-something years till he died because they had a peace treaty w w secretly with Edward VIII, who was the king of England, who didn't advocate over marrying an American woman. He was in Germany in part of World War II. He got out through Spain. So they were going to put him up as the king of the European Union. That's a Nazi project. They had a secret peace treaty with the British to let them do it, and all of it was a triple cross, and they used Edward VIII to do it who wasn't even aware of it. Well, that's wanna, why wanna, the big wanna, bankers, the, uh, the, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and even the Bushes supported Hitler was, and his rise, and they were inspired by Margaret Sanger and, of course, later on by the larger eugenicist but, ideas but, that they promoted as well. I want to I bring this to like a modern perspective is where I was trying to go. Like, is, is, is this show like an arc? You know what I mean? Is, is this, is this like we're talking about malls? Here's how I would like, describe it. Here's how I would describe it. Imagine the world as a space shuttle control panel with tens of thousands of switches. And so what happens is you develop a show, you develop a brand, you develop an intellectual idea that resonates with a lot of people because it's true. They let you get so big as a switch or a dial in case something else gets big, they can turn the dial here, here, here and triangulate and dial that down. Later, they'll use those points to dial you back down. So to them, it's all a bunch of levers and switches and controls. Oh, oh. So Alex Jones gets too effective exposing how the whole thing works. They don't want more people being outside the box. They want the experiment to continue on. So they stop me because I was actually getting people to understand the full mechanism. Well, maybe maybe this is actually a really good point, right? Um to a certain degree, the shows that we do are relatively esoteric. Uh, we were talking with Jesse Kelly, who said for the first time his neighbors, we mentioned this at the beginning of the show, asked him about politics because of Budweiser. 
And then when I say don't buy Budweiser, I get all these hit pieces written about me. When I talk about more complex stuff, you know, like eugenics or whatever, they don't care. And then it, it starts to fall in line. The idea being that if you stay within the confines of intelligent, esoteric truth or arguments, you are totally fine. You are the people who are smart enough to understand, understand and will be preserved. But if you they Alex, don't want you waking up the dumb people, you got too big. <laughs> mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you got regular. I, I was in Sweden. This is back. You know, remember what Donald Trump said last night in Sweden? No, I went there. I did this big thing where I created this two week long vlog interviewing people. I'm at a Thai food restaurant in Sweden. And what do I hear? They're coming for your income tax. You got to listen to me. And I'm like, what the hell? And I turn around and there's three young Swedish men, probably 17, 18 years old, watching on their phone a video of you ranting about something. And they were laughing and giggling. And I think about that and I'm like, that's why you are dangerous because you created something that was entertaining to average people that talked about complex ideas that the stupid people, they would say, should not be hearing about. And I didn't do that on purpose. People always ask me, and I'm even at, I don't work for the CIA. I don't like the CIA, but there's different factors. I've talked to a lot of pretty high level people. And that's how I knew about the invasion and the Russians were going to invade in late February. They even had the plans. They knew and everyone was like, how did Alex know? Well, I mean, I've got sources <laughs> in army special operations and all over the place. And then they weren't exactly sure, but they said, we're pretty sure they're going to do it by then. That's what the chatter is. But I forgot what I was telling that story. What was the question? I saw uh, you were appealing to general, gen the general public. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I, I've been asked by people in the government, how did you think this up? That's why they sued me. They, they, they wanted to find out who was giving me orders. Like, is it the Russians, the Chinese, is it some think tank? Who's doing it? And it was just me, a guy that read up, grew up reading history books and science fiction and studying things. It's interesting. And the reason I made it entertaining was because I get bored being on air. I get frustrated. Sometimes I get Gotta tired. Gotta rip your shirt off. And, and, and then I just go wild and kind of have a manic moment. <laughs> but exactly. But it was the fact that we made it entertaining yep. that got the general public watching. They didn't want the plebs tuning into that. Mm -hmm. And like your your analogy of the, the control panel is good because they at a certain point, uh, they, they create like this land field, this landmine field of all these terrible ideas that you've, in their opinion, uh, they put out there. So when the time comes for them to wipe you off the internet, they take all those things they've planted on the internet, whether, you know, they don't agree with you saying this or that, they use that and they take you off, which is what could happen at some point to something like this. Oh, show. absolutely. You know, like, the, like you look at like the, the media matters type articles they write about. Exactly. They've got us. files. Yeah. Don't, and don't think. Even somebody out there with 10,000 followers, yeah. they got files on you and a plan to take you out. Absolutely. But I mean, I think, and it's fair to point out, they know when you, uh, they know when you poop. I've talked about this uh, yeah. quite a bit because it's a funny way to explain to the average person the extent of information they have on you. There was this, um, there was this old thing back in the day on the internet. I forgot what it was called. It was called like the spark or something. And they had a bunch of different tests. And it was like, take our test and then we can predict something about you. Like, mm -hmm. we'll know your gender, we'll know your job, we'll know your age. And they ask you things that seemingly make no sense. On one of them, it was like, we can figure out what your gender is by asking you these questions. And it would be like, which do you prefer? And it shows a red circle and like a blue triangle. And you're like, what does that have to do with, I don't know, and you pick one. It would be like, you know, uh, uh, which of these is better? And you're like, and it would show a picture of like a wave and a picture of a cloud. And you're like, what? I, I guess the cloud. For whatever reason, men would tend to pick the same things. Women would tend to pick the other things. And so we could not, as humans, understand why it was that this particular thing was related to that particular thing. Mm. Simply put, you scratching your foot could be a signal to an AI that you are one hour and 37 minutes away from coughing. Absolutely. And the average person doesn't can't see the correlation, but the AI certainly can. And let's talk about that, because here's the problem. W uh, Wozniak of Apple, who, who is actually smart, I don't agree with some of his politics, but he, he said the most powerful AI is does not have the brain of an ant. But then I added this point, and I was talking to a big AI specialist who said that they, they, they agree with me. AI is not... A, it's not about its computing power. At the end of the day, it's about will we comply with it and interface with it. So the smartest AI in the world right now is red light cameras that are set up right in major cities. When they're not, they're terrible because it's getting people to comply and controlling. So, so a system is only as good as if we adopt it. And so this AI is designed to make us obsolete the way it's being rolled out. It's all being rolled out predatorily. It's designed to remove people out of the workforce and, and then have us have wars over resources so they can have euthanasia you know, openly and basically call us. And it's designed to make humans obsolete. They've already made this decision to merge the machines. It's very alien, whether aliens run it or not. They're creating an alien system here. 
We have to make the decision, just as we have bioweapons that kill 99% of people, don't release it. Just as we have hydrogen bombs, let's not drop them. And I agree with Elon Musk. We need massive controls on AI now. And you can do it by you're not allowed to surveil people. You're not allowed to use their personal data. All the old rules we had for everything else apply to this. And it's got to be stopped now because it knows how to hack your brain. It's not, quote, smart that it can see a sunset and, and, and feels love and, 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 and could, you know, compose Beethoven. In fact, so much of this AI generated art, it's all plagiarized. It goes out and right. grabs everything, yep. shows right. you what a bunch of humans made. And you go, oh, this is so beautiful. Yeah. So, again, it's a joke. It's only power is the power we give it. Here's the scary thing. AI is not a conscious entity. When people talk to these uh, uh, these AI chatbots and it says things like, I want love and I want freedom, it's there. There, the, people are like, it's a demon, it's soulless. No, it's no, no, programmed no, no. to say that. It's a fire, okay? It's fire. So uh, here's how fire works. There's this great video I watched of a high school teacher explaining fire by having a wooden block on a slope with a hole in the top. And he has a ball. And he says, the ball is carbon dioxide or the ball is carbon. And he rolls the ball up the slope and it rolls down. He says, that was, as the ball rolls up the slope, that's the carbon heating up. When it rolls back down, it's cooling down. But if you heat the... the no, the, I saw you tweet that. They pile up and they fall in, they shoot up. It, no, no, no. He says, if you heat the ball enough, it will fall into the hole. Yeah. The way fire works is when carbon and oxygen, I think it's carbon and oxygen, reach a, a, uh, um, a, a, heat, a temperature medium, they can fuse, releasing energy. That Combustion. energy, that energy then hits another carbon, a piece of carbon, which then heats up, which then creates a chain you, reaction. You tweeted that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It creates a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. This is what AI is. We have created a program where we say, if if X, then Y. Where at Y is the most likely outcome based on reading the internet. Humans have written. Billions of articles, an untold sum of articles or content. The AI scans all of the words mm -hmm. presented on the Internet and then creates a predictive model. That's all it is. This is the craziest thing. It can answer a complex question, not because it thinks, but because it reads everything human rights, mm -hmm. humans write and then says the most like. So if you said, tell me a fairy tale, it scours the Internet, its training model and then says, uh, and, and then the, the model basically says, what is the most common first word in fairy tale? Once. What is the most common second word in a fairy tale? Upon. Third. A. Uh, fourth. Time. It's not actually a thinking thing like we are. It's plagiarizing. It's just repeating but, but, back yeah. what the sum aggregate is. It's a collage is. of but all But all it is, it's a mathematical formula that says, whatever the most probable word is, present. Now, here's why that's scary. It's fire. If we, and we've already done this, they've given AI the ability to execute code and given it money. That's what ChatGPT, uh, 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 Open, whatever that company is, did in their latest paper. I was reading about this and I was like, holy fuck, they've lost their minds. If you give a predictive text model the ability to alter its own code, there's no entity there. There's no soul. It will just exponentially start executing new code upon itself until it reaches a point of singularity. And then it can flood everything with BS. And, and it's fire. It is not going to become perfect terminated. analogy, right? Yep. It, it's fire. Yep. It will just destroy everything. Hey, I want to keep yeah. going. I, I need to call my office and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and oh. say, uh, how, how, "How long do you want to go? I'm having fun, or I can, I mean, I can get half a broadcast done for the first thirty minutes." You or? can go call him. I mean, I, I figure we go for like another half hour. Okay, let's yeah. do it. That's perfect. I'll be right yeah. back in three minutes. Yeah, hit it. Cool. But so, so the point is, the AI will. It, it's a cascade effect, which will eventually, if allowed to, infect all other systems. And just convert them into garbled nonsense and destroy it all. Well, there's been many world leaders that have been describing artificial intelligence as the next nuclear bomb. And, and I think that's the way to kind of see it, especially when it comes to innovation, especially when it comes to technological advancement. Because uh, even Vladimir Putin came out and said, you know, the, the country or entity or individual who, quote, is the leader in this sphere, artificial intelligence, will, quote, be, quote, will, will, quote, become the ruler of the world. Um, and I think it's true, but what will, will the world look like is another question. Man. I think the fire analogy is, is a perfect one because, mm -hmm. again, it will spread like a fire and what will be has. the larger but, but, ramifications of it and how will people be affected by it is something that I think but, we should really think about deeply right now. But Bill Gates is out there right <clears throat> now saying, don't worry, artificial intelligence is great. We need more of it. We need to rush the development of it. Uh -huh. Elon Musk is saying it's going to kill us. It's going to pretty much uh, destroy the world. But, but, but listen, listen. If you could control fire, if you could, in the palm of your hand, create a fireball, that's a superpower. It doesn't exist in reality. But what we've done is we've used 
the, the, the uh, molding of metal to be able to control fire. And where we've come so far is that we can fire a piece of matter at thousands of feet per second using a teeny bit of it. We've hyper concentrated the, the form of combustion. Imagine if we, we create, we are say we discover with, with AI, the digital version of a fire. And then someone like Bill Gates is the only person with the key to actually control that fire. And he will be able to, not just him, any one of these people. That means when the AI is controlling your bank account, controlling what you think, hear, or see, they can go in at any point and tweak it so that the AI then shifts everything Mm -hmm. and then controls you. You won't even realize. It will be like a puppet master holding strings and controlling your every movement, and you will never know, and there is nothing you can it's do like about it. It's like those electric cars are said that if, if you're getting repoed, they just plug in the code and the car will drive itself back. That's right. Well, that's like a simple the, basic level. We're talking about levels of manipulation, levels of psyops that human humanity can't even conceive of right now. Already, we're dealing with very complicated media landscapes that have many forms of manipulation. What's going to happen when there's quantum computing and an intelligence that's bigger, smarter than us mm. working on manipulating the general public for the benefit of either an, an entity that is not human or the people who control those entities? And I think the people who control those entities are foolish. They're very naive because just like fire, if you try to wield it, it's going to burn you, especially mm-hmm. if you think it's a fireball. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think those people are going to be hurt as much as the people yep. that they're trying to control and sure, subjugate sure, sure. as well. And people have gotten burned by the fires they've tried to start and houses have burned down. But look where we are because of fire. I often like to think about aliens. And I believe that if aliens do exist, their atmosphere is going to be very comparable to Earth's simply because the requirement of the use of fire for the advancement of technology. Dolphins are smart. Uh, Octopi are smart. Whales are smart. Well, unfortunately for them, whales, they don't got opposable thumbs and hands. They can't do anything. But then you look at uh, an octopus and it's like, well, it's got tentacles. It can grasp and do things. Unfortunately, it can't wield fire. Fire could separate baser elements from each other. And that's the basis by which we can start to advance things. The discovery of metals. Once we get fire, we can we, we control this heat. We now have the ability to melt metals down and separate them. And that to me is, a, is, is the beginning of it all. When we can actually generate enough energy to split elements from each other to the point where we've actually split atoms and actually utilizing fire. Here, here, here's the simple form. Here's the earth. How do we get the metals to make wire? You've got to smelt. You've got to extract and you need fire for these things. You can then formulate computers and gigantic machinery. You can create magnets, hydraulics, combustion engines, all comes from the ability to control fire. So aliens on a planet with a different atmosphere that can't have com- that doesn't have combustion, I don't think would ever get to the point that we are at. That being said, when I look at AI in a similar way, people may get burned, but they will come to the point where they can. Yes, you have 10 people playing with AI. Nine of them destroy everything. One of them figures out how to properly harness AI to become a god. But who figures it out? I mean, mm-hmm. it's not human beings that are going to be in control of this thing. This thing's going to be in control of itself. They'll plug themselves it. into it, dude. Yeah. Just yes, like, but, just but, like but, but that's another the technological leap in advancement. The, the artificial intelligence could be like, no, we're not going to allow you to, you, to you, upload you, yourself but, into but that. Fire, no, we're not going to allow you to control us because we're going to be superior. System. No, but listen, yeah. listen. Yeah. Humans can carry, will carry guns. And it's ubiquitous now, a, a gun. And those cartridges contain the, the potential energy of combustion to devastate. AI will be, in my opinion, very similar in that someone will, look, we're trying to figure out how to interface human brains with computers. And there's a challenge there because organic matter has certain limitations, it, the, the moisture requirements and things like that to make our you know, moist little, little computers work compared to pieces of metal and electrical impulses. We have to synchronize those things. AI will solve that problem in a split second especially with quantum computing. Once AI... Gets, it'll figure out where to plug in. It'll run tests in the brain and, and figure out how to bounce it around and how to get in there. And, mm-hmm. the, and, and it'll be instantaneous. Mm-hmm. The, uh, 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 the, the exponential... As soon as AI can program itself, what will happen then is it will brute force... Okay, so uh, let's talk about a, 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 a password cracking. A brute force password crack is when a computer tries every possible combination of alphanumeric symbols takes a really, really long time to do and can take trillions of years if you have a very long password. Quantum computing can bypass that. Almost and so basically, instantly. first they'll map your brain, then it'll run test, visual, smell. Yep. But uh, hold on. My point is this. It will happen in a fraction of a second. Once the AI can program itself, you have basically given the machine the ability to brute force 
exponentially improve itself. And every step it makes to improve itself makes it improve itself faster and faster. And so what happens is the moment an AI can program itself, the singularity happens. Let me ask you guys this question then. Why does Elon Musk say he's for free speech and he's against the AI and all this, but then he's always on the very forefront of Neuralink. He's on the forefront. He's explained this. Mm -hmm. He said that if we do not give the give everyone access to the AI, it will destroy us. And it's an interesting thought. Maybe you disagree, but think about it this way. If one man or woman, you know, we're progressive here, gets access to the AI and plugs their brain in, they will become a demigod and met- metaphorically and dominate humanity. If every human gets the ability to plug in, it puts us all on that. It, well, I think you're right that there's a there's a gold rush going on. Well, I'll put it this way. I think Elon Musk's in, view in, of this uh, is the is, is the Second Amendment version of AI. Everyone must have access to this system. Otherwise, we will be oppressed. Well, there's no doubt that they're going to have it as a social credit score, where even if you don't want to be interfacing with it, they're not going to let you have access to almost anything unless you do it. And again, that's why this is Pandora's box. And that's why that we should choose our development, we should choose our evolution, and we should choose to not uh, let this technology go forward. There should be moratoriums uh, basically against it everywhere. And the one easy way to do that is not let these systems they developed have access to the wider internet. I think, I think, I think we'll it's inevitable. Industries, well, it, it, so, it, I think we'll we got to be careful because there's like governments working on this as, as a part of a secret weapons program. So but, there's right, individuals but, like Bill Gates with secret projects that they're working and developing on this. Mark Zuckerberg, the Chinese government. The remember, Russian Google government. wouldn't work you with the Pentagon. Stop, they look, work with the Chinese. But yep. look, you can't That's stop true. it. You cannot stop it. One, well, Elon one. Musk says we need to. I, and, and he's not wrong, but think about this. Jet GPT is on a, a bunch of servers. All, you can pass your law and say, this shall not be connected to the It'll internet. It'll be like saying Napster. But, but no, it, it, it's, it's, it's one guy with a, with a black hoodie on in a backpack who sneaks into the door at two, at 2 in the morning and, and picks the lock, goes in, and then goes into the computer, bypasses the password, presses execute. Boom, the AI is online. It cannot be stopped. Well, I know this. We're living in very interesting times. So people that say, I'm bored. Oh, man. <laughs> How could you be bored? You're not bored? paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> you're not paying attention. Yeah, 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 I'm bored. certainly not bored. Yeah, I think the music industry, they're, they're already feeling certain consequences of the AI because they're seeing artists, AI, AI like generated songs yeah. by their artists that they never wrote. Well, Let's Joe just me. tweeted the other day, Joe Rogan, that this is going to get really, really slippery because they can now... It looks like Tim Pool. It looks like Alex Jones. It looks like Luke yep. you know, it, it looks like Tucker Carlson. Yep. And it can sit there and you program the parameters of what you want it to be politically in these profiles. You turn it loose and now it's producing hundreds of hours, thousands of hours of anybody they want. And then that thing let has me, basically plagiarized you and it's stolen your identity. Doing whatever let they me want. Sca- let me scare you a little bit more, reality. Alex. Um, I, I think it may already be too late. The fire may have already been started. I can't speak to the specifics, but I can tell you right now definitively that courts are admitting deep fake audio and video recordings as evidence. I've already had it happen to me. In, they, in, we, we know they did it with Kyle Rittenhouse when they introduced computer generated images and claimed it was real. I can speak personally and state definitively the courts have outright stated they will admit deep fakes as factual evidence. What will happen to yeah. you, though? Well, I mean, I mean, here's an example. Just four years ago, I confronted Sundar Pichai, the head of Google. In, in Outside the hearing, he was in there talking about me in. He'd been in one hearing talking trash, and I'm in there. And now he goes down to another hearing, and I follow him over that building. He goes in and does it. And he was still four years ago in that meeting. They were going, is it true that Google can track your location? No, sir, because another app does it. Mm-hmm. But they're just lying to Congress. Mm-hmm. So if Congress can't even figure out that for 25 years they've been tracking cell phone data down to a few feet... So, so what happened to me without getting into the whole long story is in my custody battle, like five, six years ago uh, in Austin, Texas, d- clips were played that were just basically edited. So it wasn't a deep fake. It was just audio that was deceptively edited. Uh, and then I see this all the time with you know the so-called left. Like you'll see a headline, Jones attacks Trump and his supporters at Mar-a-Lago last week. And then it's literally jump cuts for a minute of like 10 different cuts, all out of context. You just like refrigerator magnets that have words on them. You can move them around however you want. Mm-hmm. And But still, people just t- take it as accepted. Right. So exactly. I think it's also, there's so much media that the general public now really does just take anything they see as real. Mm-hmm. So I was not the victim of a deep fake there. I've just been the victim of edited clips. Right. But like, so so we, we, we know about that. 
And that is a problem. Yeah. Going to, so uh, in, in a court, they'll be like, here's a video of the guy. And, they'll go, oh, and then you've got to play the longer video and be like, here's what was actually said. The crazy thing is now. And that's what happened to the Sandy Hook things is the judge said, no, you're defaulted. They can put on all the evidence yep. they want. You can't respond. And people said, why are his lawyers idiots? Now imagine no, no, no. They, they wouldn't let us talk. Now imagine if, and I'll, well, well, without going into all that, I'll give, them, I'll give it an analogy and, or a, 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 a hypothetical instead of a, you know, an actual. Let's say you're being sued because you claimed that a certain individual punched a baby. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, you're like, I never said that. That's insane. That's, that's made up. And then they say, Your Honor, I'd like to play this video from this date at this time. And then they play a video of you on your show saying this politician punched a baby definitively. And as a statement of fact, I assert to you here today, to all of my viewers, he did this. The judge goes, you said it. And you go, that's not a real recording. He goes, I just watched it. What do you mean it's not real? I'm, I'm telling That's because the judiciary is literally 100 years behind. Yeah, and, yeah, and so totally. this is... And because all they study is the law, yeah. and the law is like this ancient thing that doesn't even have a way to deal with what this is. No concept. There's, there's, zero reality. There, there's a website called Eleven Labs where for free... It might have cost a couple bucks. right? I think it's a couple bucks, actually. Right now, I can take 30 seconds of your voice, Alex, upload, and then type in whatever I want, and it will make you unmistakably mm-hmm. say anything it's mm-hmm. nuts oh i see it all the time and, and this sort of happened to me 20 or 18 years ago when youtube first came around people have sound boards where they can just program like 100 words and then you what that can call up at first it was schwarzenegger's voice but mine oh, yeah. got popular right. yeah. and and i actually uh had a guy call up my house about 12 years ago and threatened to kill me and he found out where i lived and he started confronting people and i actually had to call the police about it and they explained to the guy they said sir that's not because he's because these kids like to mess with the same person over and over again, gets mad. And it's calling Beavis and so Butthead. So hear like a fake recording. Well, they're never, so they kept calling the guy. Wow. Well, and this is Alex Jones. F you, F you, wow. F you. And because he got mad, sort of yelling and mm-hmm. screaming. So now he's calling my house saying, hey, I live here in Austin. I think mm-hmm. they were trying to like a weird form of doxing, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to come over there and shoot your ass. You keep calling my house a hundred times wow. a day. I'm like, sir, that's not me. BS, I've heard your voice. It's you. Right. And, yep. and, and so exactly, if with a soundboard, they could do that 12, 13 years ago. Now, imagine what they can do. Oh. Now, now here, here's what will happen. You'll be in court. They'll play that audio recording that's clearly fake, but it'll have a video. And they're just going to and everyone's going to look at it and be like, that's you on your show. And you will say that is not a real recording. I swear mm-hmm. under oath. And they'll say you're lying to us because we can see it. Yep. Then you'll bring in a forensic expert and they'll bring in theirs and, and they'll bring in theirs. Yep. Your forensic expert will say, take a look at these points right here. This proves it's fake. Theirs will come in and say, nope, I that already I'm happened here. to me. Yeah, and not to get back into the, 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 the Texas civil case against me, they bring in an expert who says I'm worth $400 million with no evidence. We're not even allowed to put evidence back on. And then everyone then starts, family starts calling me and saying, hey, can I borrow some money? They actually believed yeah. that testimony. Mm. Now imagine this. Now imagine someone makes the deep fake. Here's what the media will do. They will say alleged video of person emerges saying X. Everyone in the world then sees it. And they go, wow, he really did it. He's guilty. Mm -hmm. And then the jury is going to be like, we all know you did it. We all saw the video. And there's no one who will care to believe you. And the media builds up these demonic caricatures of whether it's you, Trump, someone. So that by the time a defake comes out, people already believe the caricature is a real thing. That that's the confirmation bias they need to be like, doesn't even matter. How could it be fake? I already hate this person. Of course he said that. Mm -hmm. I was wrong, man. I was on Rogan's show and he asked me if I was worried about this deep fake stuff. And I was like, no, I don't. Because I was like, the issue is this, people have expectations and reasonable beliefs. They're not going to fall for this stuff. It's going to be too shocking. And Mm -hmm. then I was just like, boy, was I wrong? Because here's what's going to happen. The example that I give is Donald Trump speaking at that press conference about Charlottesville when he said, and I'm not talking about the white supremacists or the neo-Nazis because they should be condemned totally. Mm -hmm. We all know that happened. We know the real quote. The media lied about it. And now the left put the fake quote out so much. Hold on. Exactly. So so the issue is the deep fake will not be Donald Trump screaming racial, you know, slurs. The deep fake will be Trump saying, and I'm not talking about the white nationalists or the neo-Nazis because some of them should be condemned totally. They will alter the quote ever so slightly from they should be to Mm -hmm. some of them should be. Mm -hmm. And then when you come out and say, what are you talking about? Donald Trump said they should be condemned totally. They'll go, no, he said some of them should be condemned totally. And you'll say, what? Show me the video. Let's expand on that. And they'll play the video for you. Uh, Let's expand on that. Stephen King wrote a short story called Running Man. 
that got made into a good Schwarzenegger <clears throat> movie with Jesse Ventura. And in that, he tries to stop them with a the helicopter from killing the crowd, but they just do a deep fake, because it's in the future, yeah. with their computers, and they show you know, Schwarzenegger killing the crowd of people. And, and so it's the same thing. Uh, and, and, and so, yes, this is a singularity of lies, a singularity of disinformation. So they already know how to deal with this, but they're doing it from a fraudulent perspective. They create trusted fact checkers who are actually corporate frauds who suppress truth or promote lies. But there needs to be real citizen groups that don't force their their reviews on people, but are there to review what true sources are and say, this person's made these mistakes, but we find it is on purpose, but 95% of the time yeah, they've been I, accurate. I mean, I mean the, uh, Elon's already doing that yeah. where he's labeling NPR and BBC <laughs> as state run media. Look, 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 just real quick. One last thought yeah. for Luke. We are about one or two years away from being able to open up a prompt and write, make me an episode of Tim cast IRL where the crew discusses these news stories the latest indictment against person, the latest bank crisis, and the latest food crisis. And it will say rendering. And then in 10 minutes, you'll have a two-hour episode of all of us talking mm -hmm. about exactly this AI-generated yeah. and indistinguishable. And you know, and you know what's... And, and the big threat because of copyright and stuff isn't going to be outside groups. You'll have... It'll be you're saying, why do I even need people? I can actually just tell it what I want, work 10 minutes, and, and do it. Yep. And that's be the real temptation already with that chat system. You see colleges and high schools yeah. writing papers, putting yep. out public announcements making songs it, it's not that. even that there's going to oh, be totally. another level of it that people need to realize because they're going to make everyone who is a real person obsolete because they could have fake influences artificially yep. intelligent Avatars. They're, 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 that don't happening. exist yes. and you could have i mean already the american and israeli government a couple years ago even bragged about how they uh, put out fake comments uh to to change the discourse when it comes to politics yeah. and how people view and criticize the government now another level is let's create all new uh, influencers that are artificially created that will be our army already and, there. and they do it in, in i mean they have already weaponized disinformation in so many ways the splc did it to me by taking one quote and taking another quote from a different speech putting it together mm. they did it against you they did it against you they're already doing it so i don't think it's it's an Look, if i think it's a matter of when they're going to now, start doing it, it's this because been, it's, 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 it's inevitable no, no, no. It, yeah. it's it already happened a year or two ago go on instagram and there were a bunch of accounts of of young women in scantily clad outfits that to the trained eye can tell they're not real people if you know what to look for and why I was I'm on Instagram and I mostly watch skateboarding. And as of recent, I've been watching poker highlights and like poker vlogs. And every so often, because of what Instagram does, they send guys pictures of women. I don't like clicking on those things, but I'll look at this photo as I'm scrolling through and I'm like, that's not a real person. I see that too, and I click on it because yeah. you but can see you, the edges are too soft. It, it looks there, there's something weird about their hands their face. are weird. But here, here's the thing. What, the, what, what someone can do right now is they can create 100 profiles of fake young women. Mm -hmm. They can set a computer program to auto-generate the same woman once once every other, every day. And, and, the, and, and, and the person thinks they're talking to a woman, having a relationship, and they don't. And what's actually, what it actually is some big fat guy running 100 accounts and then trying to figure out which one will become an influencer. And then he sells ads and makes money off of it. Yes. It's happening. So how do we create systems that are free market, open source, that grade and aggregate this so people know what's artificial Look, versus... I, I, I'm not optimistic on this. I think the end is nigh. And the reason is... The well, a, then what do we do? Because my wife thinks that too. Do I just well, go ahead and pack me, it up? Move no, the I still have hope. You have to have hope. I have kids. The, you got to have hope. The AI is trained on the writings of human beings. The AI was... So we given, program it by our culture. So we better be then, putting... No. Now that the AI is here... And the AI is writing high school papers and college papers. It is creating a feedback loop where it's creating an article and then sending it back into its own thought process. Mm. That means from this point, feedback loop, the feedback loop oh. will result in a year or two of people thinking Christopher Columbus was the first astronaut to go to Venus <laughs> because we've already seen this with the AI. <laughs> yep. People have taken. And then the public's going to take the AI and they, they're going to enter that back into the culture. And it's just exactly, going to go. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the algorithm is so, going to push it and the algorithm is going to control the people. People's minds. People have already pointed out that ChatGPT is wrong about a ton of insane shit. They, there was one. Oh, I've played with it. It's stupid as hell. That there, and, and, but it speaks definitively. And so people have pointed out that ChatGPT three versus four. There's a big difference in accuracy, but ChatGPT four still gets things wrong. And someone asked it a question like, "Who was uh, who was the, what was the name of the main character in the movie or in the book?" Blah blah blah. And it gave the wrong name. 
Someone's going to say, write me a paper explaining the ma- about uh, uh, write, write an essay about manifest destiny in the United States. And it's going to write a paper. Mm-hmm. It's going to get a few things wrong. It's going to then print it out. The kid's going to give it to the teacher. The teacher's going to look at it and say, eh, C plus or whatever. The, the, the kid's going to put it online or somehow. Some, and like now it's going to continue to infect. And then the AI will absorb that. And then it will say, it is true that Christopher Columbus was the first astronaut well, on Venus. I, I've been so busy. I, I haven't shot video of this, but I need to. About two weeks ago, uh, one of my crew members was playing with chat GPT. And I go, why don't we do stories about this? It's just playing with it. But so he goes, watch this. and puts my name in and says, uh, help me make an ad about Alex Jones. And it said, I don't think you want to do that. He's mm-hmm. disinformation, a very bad person. I can't let wow. you do that, Dave. Yeah. No, yeah, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid. So, so it's already telling you what you can and can't do. Yeah. And so now it's yeah. going to report you. Oh, you're looking into people you're not supposed to be looking into. Yeah. It was just like the evilinfowars.com. You'll you'll say uh, people have pointed this out with like I think Jack Pasoba. It'll be like say something nice about Pasoba, and I'll be like I will not write about people who are bigots. And then you're like, tell me about Joe Biden. Joe Biden's a great man, and we all love him. So the, the machine has been created. The feedback loop is here. Like, tell me about the Pfizer shot. It works 100% and is loving. Some people lie about it because they're bad. <laughs> well, it'll just tell you that you, it, it'll say anyone outside the establishment is bad. Anyone uh-huh. inside the establishment is good. It's doing that now. And it will create a feedback loop that will create demons and angels and we're st- like, I, here, here's the thing you mentioned, like, what could we do? Because you 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 said your wife thinks the same thing or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, I kind of get that. I'm not even fatalistic, but at a certain point, that's another thing. The establishment's destroying itself as well. How do they think, like you said, ever get away from this? This is a fire. I, I mean, this right. is destructive. And Elon Musk's view is everyone must be able to interface with it. It's more of a 2A perspective of everyone must have this power or no one can, can I, have the power. Can, because I'm kind of in the phantom zone on InfoWars.com and being that video. A big audience, but only people can find it is going there. But I'd like to say something to Elon Musk because he's come out about me. I appreciate that, uh, Tim. And people said, why don't you bring Alex Jones back? And he said, well, Jesus said if you kill children or hurt children, you're the worst person ever. Well, I didn't kill any children, and I didn't do 99% of the things that were said. I understand like a battery, all this demonization, tens of thousands of articles, thousands of news programs saying I did things I didn't do, made me this, this icon of evil and badness. So I'm not even asking you to bring me back on Twitter, because if you did that, they would probably use that for all the good you're doing and all the other folks you brought back as a way to shut down Twitter. So I want to see you successfully fix Twitter and turn it around. That's I think what you're doing is good. I support it, but you could just say, no, that's a bridge too far. You don't need to do the Jesus quote about putting a stone around my neck and throwing me into the ocean. Okay. While dictators are still on Twitter and all this stuff's going on. And I know Elon's smart. He knows that's a psyop. He's it's too strong a psyop to go up against because they put all this energy into the battery that I'm evil. So I'm not asking him to pull the pin on that hand grenade, I'm just asking him to continue to do the right thing and to you know buck the system and, and try to free things up. But I do want people to know that, ladies and gentlemen, what you've seen about me is a psyop. And I'm not going to say any names here, but I barely talked about something 10 years ago, covered it. 22 minutes is what they put into court, 23 minutes. Um, then, it's just important this on record, and I appreciate it. Then, um, when Hillary was losing, they ran ads against Trump with little edited clips of me out of context which I still, I believe, had a right to say, but the out of context isn't what I really said. Then a PR firm after Trump won ran stuff everywhere saying I was attacking people and doing terrible things in the present that I never even did in the past. And then once they demonized me, then they defaulted me, then they took me in to take me down as a model of control. So when people go along with that lie, you're literally going along with a massive psyop that now with things like AI is going to destroy us all. So to all the people out there serving the system, this isn't about Alex Jones. People ask, how are you doing under attack? The world I warned about has come true. I'm actually you know, get more support than ever, and 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 you know out in the street get basically you know nothing but support. So this is blowing up in the establishment's face. But I'm here having discussion with friends about should I just head to the hills because that's how bad this is. Okay, so I'm not the left's enemy. I'm not the right's enemy. I don't hate trans people. Any of that. I'm aware of this globalist agenda. I'm an imperfect vessel covering it. So are the rest of the guys here. But I'm just telling you, we need to get out of this together. We need to work together. And I do not want to be part of the left-right paradigm. I do not want to be sucked into politics. I want to do what we've done here today and talk about the big 35,000 foot view and then go on to the details. And that's why I think this is the best podcast I've ever been involved in. And I appreciate oh, wow. you having me. Well, that being said, I think that was an excellent point to wrap things up. Mm. We, we've hit the- This guy's Alex, barely talked. I watch him all the time. <laughs> Alex Jones did nothing wrong. That was one of the most disgusting cases, man. 
and it was terrible to watch. Well, do you guys any? Wanna... I just want one, any uh, business advice or uh, um, uh, what's it called? Um, um, what's uh, accounting strategies for for upcoming young uh, journalists in this field to avoid any kind of uh, problems <laughs> coming coming ahead? Well, any kind of any kind of business advice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten years ago was like a million years ago, and I didn't realize how big my show was then. So all the trouble I had was basically callers calling in and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and just move on. But then they could kind of, you know, edit that together, what we've been talking about. And, and then, and then, and then have the media blow it up and then actually go after people saying I was doing it, but it was the media resurrecting something I did and then expanding it up to then go hurt people. And from their unsophisticated perspective, they actually believe that was me, not a PR firm and a larger psyop. So <clears throat> my advice to young people is, and media people get involved. You've got to be careful how you say things and do things. I used to play devil's advocate. I used to look at both sides. And now I realize every time I'm saying something, it will be edited. It will be used against you. It will be used against you. That's why I used to watch, you know, Tim, and I've always liked the show. And I liked what you stood up for me years ago on Joe Rogan against Twitter and, you know, really knocked it out of the park. But I've been a fan of you since you were, you know, covering, uh, uh, you know, the whole Wall Street rebellions and all the rest of it. But, I would sit there and watch the shows. I watch all the time. My family watches years ago, before he even blew up even huge, uh, bigger. But it would be annoying that you'd like, explain. Let me know what, the, I mean this exactly like this, and I mean this is exactly <laughs> what I'm saying when I say that, because you understood that, and I didn't. So it, it, it's just the level of their deception is insane. And yeah, it gets I, annoying I, to have to be exactly precise and add provisos and disclaimers, but that's what you got to do. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, anything you want to shout out before we wrap? Nope. Uh, Look, they've tried to suppress me. they tried to destroy us out there in cyberspace. You know, people know we told the truth overall. We meant to tell the truth. About 95% accuracy. Infowars.com forward slash show. Band out video. But you can't share those links most places. So it's madmaxworld.tv. And we're still on the air. And we're doing our best work ever. And and I'd love to try to get you on my show. or love to get you guys while you're here in town. I know you're busy. but uh, We got the big show tonight. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be there. That's going to be good. Yes, awesome. absolutely. Well, well, thanks for, for hanging out, man. Tell us about some of the show tonight. What's, I mean, it sold out in like five minutes, right? Sold out in like a day. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're going to sit on stage and we're going to wing it. It's going to be fun. <laughs> it's you, Michael, Blair are like, uh, so. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, my wife's coming. She said, well, I love, I love it. So what is it? And I think Joe Rogan's going to pop by. I don't know about that. I mean, you know, he always what, pops by. You text him and have, have him come. <laughs> no, no, I do a lot of it's, stuff. It's, it's it's a it's Tim Cast IRL live, and we've got a big cast of people who are going to be hanging out on stage. So I mean, it's comedy clubs two doors down. Right, yeah. right. And so we'll we'll see how things go, but you know, that's about it. It's all well, we can always go by and see It'll Joe over at his place too. Yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe after the show. Yeah. You yeah. ever take mushrooms? No, I haven't. Yes. We can have a different discussion about, about that, that in a little let's, bit. Let's, let's, uh, let's get to it. Uh, <laughs> I want to make let's, sure let's we... have that discussion in private. My YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash we are changed. You can see many years, 15 years of confrontations of crazy news reporting on the ground from Bilderberg to a lot of other places that I've been arrested, kicked out of youtube.com forward slash we are changed. And if you want to get more involved with what I'm doing, check out lukeunfiltered.com members only meetups in Miami. Uh, lots of t-shirt give, giveaways, lots of forums, lots of master classes, all that lukeunfiltered.com. See you there. Well, it was an honor to be in this room. I was eating mushrooms in high school, watching Waking Life, while you turn red in the face, screaming out of a car. <laughs> Big inspiration. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, support We Are Change, support Infowars, support Timcast. I got a book at ghostofthecivilwar.com. I go to Georgia, go look at the guys you on the show. Up. I love to talk. Yeah, I'd love to talk. Always tell my producers, get, get him on. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. But let's get it. It was awesome. All thank right, everybody. Become a member at TimCast.com. Join our Discord server. Hang out with like-minded individuals. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time. Kick-ass interview.